Hey everybody, <laughs> it's Romanian Black, and welcome to the penultimate chapter set of Volume Three of Scum Villain. I'm gonna miss Volume Three because you know what? Last week was amazing. <laughs> I've really enjoyed volume three. I, I'm a little trepidatious because I'm like, it feels like we have, we have four chapters left of this volume. We have two that we're doing this week, chapter 78 and 79. And the next week we have chapters 80 and 81, but all together we're looking at, you know, a solid 80 pages left to go. I'm so curious because it seems like we're about to go and infiltrate, um, basically to try to stop the merging of the human realm and the demon realm, which is what um, Tian Long Jun has proposed happen. Um, he just wants to, he just wants us all to join hands and sing Kumbaya. And more importantly, he wants access to his porn. <laughs> He's struggling to get, I'm joking, but I don't know what's going to happen. As per usual with this series, you cannot predict where it's going to go. And in my head, I'm like, are we going to get done with the battle in 80 pages, because we could, we very well could, especially as this, this, you know, series has streamlined and ran through everything. But then it's like, there is a whole volume back there that's bigger than all the other volumes. And I'm like, if we end this war, what else is there left to do? And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm kind of curious. But then the other part of me, because I've read Heaven Official's Blessing, which is like twice the length of this, I'm like, oh, well, they could do a lot of things and things may not go as smoothly as we think that they're going to and carry over into volume four. We'll just have to wait and see. I don't know. But I've got a couple comments I want to talk about. I've got some feral fandom business that I want to do and then we're going to dive in. But I'm super, super excited because last week was so good. Last week was just Mwah. chef's kiss there was flirting there was humor shang chinghua was getting thrown around it was great i was just living my best life last week reading and i was so excited and so with that being said let's just dive into the comments now keep in mind these comments are dealing with the incidents of oh you know like i would say 15 chapters ago <laughs> So you'll probably be like, wow, you're really recording ahead, but I can't help it because this series is so damn good. That's why. So um, Sky, Azure Eclipse, 1496. And I'm going to read a lot of these verb verbatim. I have them pulled up on my screen here. It says, something that really got me in these past few chapters is that Shin Ching Cho's point of view, he stops referring to Lo Binghei as just the protagonist and instead calls him this child a few times with a lot more familiarity. It's subtle, but I think it says a lot about how he's now seeing Bing Hei with more sympathy and attachment than he wants to outwardly admit. And I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't notice the subtle change of the protagonist to this child. That didn't hit me until you pointed it out. And I was like, oh, it is, yeah. Of course, you know, we've seen throughout the chapters, Shin Ching Chiu become a little bit more outwardly like, oh no, it's fine. I'm, it's fine. I'm okay with this. And being less in denial and more just being like, yes, I know. I like him. Stop it. And it's been so great to see. But that is a really, really cool little subtle thing that happens. Also, we've joked in the Discord that Shin Ching Cho thinks he's like 80 when he's 20. And it's like, dude. <laughs> Really? It's like the opposite of Steve Buscemi being like, hello, my fellow kids. It's the opposite of that, right? He thinks that that's how it is, but that's not how it is in reality. So thank you, Sky Azure Eclipse. That was a really good comment. Good to point out. Angry is Panda. Angry is a panda. Um, comments, some people don't think that he's actually, and this is referring to Shin Ching Cho, which this comment got me. I was like, what? But I really like the way they phrase this. Some people think that Shin Ching Cho is not actually in love with Bing Hei, or they don't seem to understand how much he really cares about everyone around him, which is sad because I feel characters that aren't emotionally vulnerable or don't express their feelings outwardly sometimes get misunderstood in the fandom. Sure, he laughs things off and he doesn't show what he's feeling on his face, but the fact he finally breaks down crying in front of Bing Hei, along with how he acts when he's asleep shows how much he really cares. Yeah, I that is something because I've been projecting myself and relating so hard to Shin Ching Cho. That's so true. Like, I feel that in some ways, Shin Ching Cho is kind of, he's in interesting ways, MXTX is using him to kind of tackle this idea of masculinity. And he's been reading Proud Immortal Demon Way 
with the idea that, oh, we don't, we don't cry. We don't share our emotions. But in, inside, Chin Ching Cho is a very emotional person, but he doesn't outwardly want to appear vulnerable. And if you, if you explore like media and how they portray men, especially now, Shin Ching Cho is not heterosexual, but he thinks he is. <clears throat> and so, you know, if you look at the way that men are portrayed or, or designated by society to be portrayed, regardless of their sexuality, where vulnerability is considered as a weakness, then yeah, it would make sense why Shin Ching Cho is kind of be conditioned to not express that. But it's, it's relevant, I think, to note that Shin Ching Cho does love Lo Bing Hei. He shows ways that he loves him just not outwardly. He's the polar opposite of Lo Bing Hei, who is constantly trying to validate and get validation for his affection. He's constantly like, notice me, senpai. Notice me, Shizun. I love you. And Shin Ching Cho's like, <laughs> but deep down inside, he does love him. It's, it's, you know, your typical cat versus dog scenario, which I love the fan art that portrays Shin Ching Cho as a cat and Lo Bing Hei as a dog. It's so perfect. But I, I like the way you phrase that angry as a panda. Thank you. And then finally, Anime Annie comments, what I took from Shin Ching Cho saying that he doesn't like weak characters who hold others back or those who get taken hostage is Shin Ching Cho is no damsel in distress. And now that's furthering the idea of Shin Ching Cho being like Megara from Hercules, which we've been joking that he's like, I won't say I'm in love. <laughs> but his internal rant about Lo Bing Hei's beauty is a perfect way to showcase Shin Ching Cho's geek side. It reminded me a lot of the ranting and raving about specific parts of various media, especially in the way that he brings airplane shooting towards the sky into it. If the author said it was so, then it's undeniably a canonical fact. And then they also noted that Scum Villain Self-Saving System has so much merch potential, and yet we have barely any official merchandise, which is such a shame. I, you could capitalize so much off of Scum Villain. There's so much you could do with the merch. There's so much you can do, but it's a shame. It really is. The Feral fandom, I feel your struggles. But I like how Anime Annie noted that because, yeah, I, I think Shin Ching Cho's other thing is he doesn't want to appear vulnerable because he doesn't want to appear effeminate or like a damsel in distress. He doesn't want to be feminized. He's like, no, I'm a man. I don't need anybody to rescue me, which most women don't need anybody to rescue them either. But regardless, he's like, but he doesn't want to appear vulnerable because he feels like that will make him appear to be weaker. And he's like, no, I like this idea that Shin Ching Cho wants to stand on equal footing with Lo Bing Hei. Just they're in different ways on equal footing. It reminds me a lot of the other MXTX protagonists, whether it's Wei Wuxian and La Wang Ji, or whether it's Xilian and Hua Chong. Like they both, they all, one thing I love about the MXTX main couples is that there isn't one that's necessarily the submissive and one that's the dominant. Rather, it's these two individuals that can stand side by side and fight back to back and be equal with one another just in different ways. And I love that. I think that's great. But yeah, so as far as the feral fandom goes, <laughs> I, again, there's been so much fan art shared in the Discord this last month. I, it's been really hard for me to not share all of it, but I know we would be here for at least an hour if I did. So I just picked out my top four. I just picked up my top four from the week, and these are my four favorite pieces that were shared. Um, if you've ever seen the Barbie movie, which I have, this one here of <laughs> Shin Ching Cho as, uh, as Ken, as, or as Barbie, and then Lo Bing Hei as Ken is so perfect. It's so good. Like, Shin Ching Cho just looks like they're about to die. And then Lo Bing Hei is like, hey, hey, everything's great. Like, I just, I love it so much. It's just the expressions, the black and white. It's perfect. You know what? Lo Bing Hei is knuff. We can all agree on that. Um, I really liked Pancake and Be Happy shared some artwork where Lo Bing Hei was Snow White and Shin Ching Cho was the evil queen, <laughs> which is a ship I never thought about. And I was like, oh my God. But I really like this one that Pan that Be Happy shared where it's literally like Shin Ching Cho's in the evil queen outfit with the poison apple. And then you have Lo Bing Hei reaching out to try to bite maybe the poison apple, maybe Shin Ching Cho. <laughs> but I just, I love Lo Bing Hei's like big poofy hair in the ponytail with the crown and the bow. And I love his big beefy arms. So good. So good. Um, then, the, as a teacher, this one struck me to my core that Pancake shared in the Discord. 
it struck me to my core as a teacher and also as someone who is basically the film version of Shin Ching Cho. And that is where um, you see Lo Binghe at the top with his big old eyes. And he's like, Shizun spends a lot of time with the other disciples. And Shin Ching Cho's like, that's called teaching. <laughs> He's like, I'm teaching them. What the fudge? <laughs> it reminded me of, um, there is a patron that I subscribe to. I don't have a lot of patrons that I um, am, am patronizing on Patreon. Um, but one of them is the author of Takeoff, which is a uh, BL series. Um, but in that series, the main character, Nathan, he is a teacher and Andrew is his student. But they're also kind of in a relationship. So it's fun. But yeah, that, made, that reminded me of that. But I love it so much. And then I forget who shared this one, but we talked about it back in the chapters, but Tianlong Jun being like, I'm a terrible dad, but I'm totally into my son's relationship. We talked about in the discord that it is kind of like the trope of the father that is like against his son because of his sexuality. Tianlong Jun doesn't care about Lo Binghe, but it's not because of his sexuality. That's like the only aspect he likes about him. He's like, he's like, man, it's awesome, you're gay, son. And it's like, it's such a, a trope subversion, right? So this piece of art says, my son kind of sucks, but the gay porn about him slaps, though. <laughs> and I love that he's holding, like, Rasputin from Anastasia, like, holding his arm that's detached in the air. So, yeah, these were all great. I loved all of these fan art pieces. I have been living for... I can't get on. I have muted all the tags for Scum Villain on Twitter. I have muted all the tags related to the characters so that I don't get spoiled. I don't look up any fan fiction. I don't look up any fan art. So, and it drives me nuts because I really love the series and I would love to see things about it, but I can't. So, you all in the Discord are keeping me fed and sane during these harsh times. <laughs> And they're going to be harsh times for the rest of the year because I don't think I'm going to finish Scum Villain before January 2025. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, we've got this month and next month left, but I don't think I'm going to finish it. I definitely think it'll be the start of 2025 when I get done, which is exciting. But I definitely think it's going to be the rest of 2024 is going to be a Scum Villain year. Not that I'm complaining because I really like this story and I'm not ready for it to end, especially knowing there's no other media surrounding it. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, uh, we've talked for over 10 minutes. I'm super excited. I have no clue what chapter 78 or 79 are going to give us. But at this point, I have no clue and I'm excited about it. So we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive right in and see what happens for Scum Villain Self-Saving System. And we're going to start that here in three, two, one, and let's uh, go. Chapter 78. Shin Ching Cho said quietly, well, that's not the problem. Lo Binghe didn't relent. Well, then what is the problem? Shin Ching Cho held up his fan. Well, let's solve this problem before us, and then we can talk later. <laughs> Lo Binghe slowly backed off and then smiled. All right, he said lightly. After all, we'll have the time to talk later. <laughs> I like the Lo Binghe. I like Lo Binghe. He's like, oh, so um, we are going to talk later. Okay, all right. He's in such a better mood now that Shin Ching Cho has like reduced that barrier and lowered his walls, and he's like, fine, we'll go hang out later and. I don't know what'll happen, but just let's get this done with. I, I Lo Binghe is a completely different person, but I kind of like it. Everyone in their group could sense that countless creatures lurked all around them, ready to pounce, hiding in the densely clustered foliage and waist-high grass, as well as between the gaps in the stark white heaps of rubble. Jewel green eyes and hissing breaths rose and fell like tiny ripples. Ooh, I love that description. That's so good. At this time, the advantage of having Lo Binghe as a vanguard became fully apparent. Whichever direction he walked toward, the ill winds immediately ceased, becoming as silent as the grave. The creatures waiting in ambush either played dead in mass or fled in panic, rustling as they went. To put it plainly, it was like they were avoiding the plague. With that kind of divine assistance, they reached their goal in far less time than they anticipated. Again, this story is like streamlined, streamlined, do, do, do. But you know what? It all is in canon because Lo Binghe is the was the protagonist, is the protagonist, and has this ability. So it's not really, you know, it all makes sense within the story, right? If within some swirling white fog, 
a location that spewed black cheese straight up into the sky suddenly appeared. Look, anyone who wasn't blind would definitely find it strange. The mountain cave's entrance was covered in a dense cloak of green leaves, gloomy and forbidden. And forbidding. When standing by the entrance, there was a sense of chill. Everyone stopped in their tracks, hesitant. Their original expectation had been that, before reaching this place, they would need to kill 800 enemy generals, slaughter another thousand demonic creatures, and cut their way through all kinds of poisonous insects and alien plants. Only then would they painfully arrive at the final level. Even if they were... Even if it were less eventful, surely their clothes needed some blood on them to be worthy of a boss fight. I'm afraid we cannot act recklessly, said a sect leader. We should first investigate and, the, and ascertain the situation, another agreed. But of course, said Lo bing -hei. He just finished speaking when Mobe Jun sent Shang Qinghua flying forward with a kick. He really did go flying, flying, flying. Under Shen Qingshou's shocked gaze, Sheng Qinghua tumbled and skidded as he went flying into the hole to investigate and ascertain the situation. After a long dead silence, a terrified scream suddenly exploded from within the cave. Ah! Oh my god! So, okay. So, they're like, basically, you know, what they expect is they're going to arrive here. There's going to be all of these monsters. Everything's going to be crazy. And they're going to have this big boss battle. But things are working out relatively well for them because... Because Mobe Jun and Lo Binghe are scaring off all the demons. But I love that Mobe Jun just sends Shang Qinghua in, of all people, to go check things out. What? Chapter 21, always together. And of course, Shang Qing Chou's like, we can't let anything happen to Shang Qinghua. We need him to stop Tianlong Jun. So with lightning speed, Shang Qing Chou grabbed a handful of leaves from a vine. He just charged into the cave with the rest when he heard a voice. At the back of the cave, Jin Mo had been stabbed into a crack within the rocks. That black chi and purple miasma they'd seen was pouring from its blade. Oh, so that's what they'd seen coming out of the cave. Tianlong Jun sat atop a green stone. And not far in front of it stood Shang Qinghua. Sunlight from outside spilled into the cave, illuminating part of Tianlong Jun's body. Right away, someone gasped, drawing in a mouthful of cold air. Shen Qingcho finally understood why Shang Qinghua had screamed so terribly seconds ago. Though the smile on Tianlong Jun's face was as elegant as ever, the right half of his face was nearly entirely the dark purple of necrosis, making his smile tremendously unnerving. His left sleeve hung limp, completely empty. It seemed that the arm that kept falling off could no longer be reattached. This dilapidated, near decimated appearance was far from the final boss that Shin Ching Cho had envisioned. That's interesting that, yeah, he's not, of course, this whole series, it's not what you expect. Mm -hmm. He couldn't help but pay attention to Lo Bing Hei. But on that face, there was only a tranquility that seemed almost wooden, and Shin Ching Cho couldn't tell what it meant. Tian Long Jun tilted his head. Less people than I would have thought. I expected it to be like that time on Bailu Mountain with hundreds of masters all coming at me together. Wu Wang humped. Well, look at that ghastly appearance of yours. Not to mention you're without even a single underling. Who would need that many people? So we meet again, Peak Lord Shen. I, ha I indeed have not a single underling, but I do have a nephew. The words had barely left Tianlong Jun's mouth when a green shadow flashed through the cave. Zhu Long silently placed himself in front of Tianlong Jun, shielding him. For some reason, this master and servant both gave off an air of wretchedness. Being unsuited to demonic energy, Tianlong Jun's dew mushroom body had deteriorated to the point of falling apart. That was understandable. However, Zhu Long's eyes, too, had yellowed. And his neck, cheeks, forehead, arms, just about any part of him that was exposed now crawled with scales. The result was sinister and frightening, as well as deeply reminiscent of his half-man, half-snake form back in the cave of Bailu Forest. Peak Lord Shen, he rasped. Yes, it's me. <laughs> How did you end up like this? And what connections do you have with this person this time, Shidi? Yu Qingyan asked, composed as ever. Oh my god! Deep connections! The situation had only progressed to its current state with the heavy involvement of said person. Shen Qingcho wanted to say something when Tianlong Jun raised his chin, squinting at Yu Qingyan. I remember you. 
After thinking a bit, he said with conviction, Back then, the Huan Hua Palace's old geezer wanted you to help him with the ambush. But you ignored him. So you're the current sect leader of Sangjong Mountain. Not bad. Your distinguished self's memory is also quite good. Tianlong Jun smiled and smiled, then gave a sigh. If you were also trapped in a pitch black darkness for over 10 years, unable to glimpse the sky or sun with nothing to pass the days, but reminiscing over past affairs, your memory would be quite good as well. This time, no one answered him. Yu Qingyang gripped Shan Zhu, then struck at Tianlong Jun with the sheathed sword. Tianlong Jun barely managed to evade. With a rumbling roar, half of the cave wall behind him collapsed right there and then, opening up a large hole. Outside, there was nothing but sky, while swirling sand and loose rocks plummeted into the depths below. Cold air streamed into the cave, as fine as snowflakes drifted in a snow dance, dazzling the eyes. Oh, I love this! Why can't we have this animated?! From the frozen river 300 meters below, one could faintly hear wave after wave of beastly howls and the sounds of slaughter. The first wave of southern border demons had already landed. Let me guess. Bison Peak is again fighting as the vanguard, am I correct? Taolong Jun asked. The dozens of people on the scene dispersed, then rushed him from various angles. At the front of the assault, Wu Wang swung his staff with fierce vigor, his moments, vi his moments and movements vicious. Though Shan Zhu slowly forced Zhu Xilong back, he still dutifully drew the brunt of the attacks. Tianlong Jun continued to sit upon his stone completely at ease. I remember that you also waited until the last moment to draw your sword that day, he said to Yu Qingyang, doing the same now. Yu Qingyang didn't answer. He was about to land a palm strike on Zhu Xilong when another sect leader stole in front of him and attacked first. Zhu Xilong neither avoided nor retreated, taking the blow head on but it was the sect leader who screamed instead. Shin Qingzhou's pupils contracted. Don't touch him, he yelled. His entire body is poisonous. In the chaos of battle, several people were poisoned, while several others were sent flying out of the cave by explosive surges of demonic chi and spiritual energy. They careened out into the high altitudes, plummeting downward before they managed to flip themselves back onto their swords, thereby regaining their, fo their footing. Shang Qinghua stealthily snuck towards Shin Qingzhou's location. Zhu Xilong was overwhelmed by the excitement of battle, so when he glimpsed a suspicious figure creeping away, he flung two green snakes at them without thinking. Shin Qingzhou saw all this clearly. He flipped his hand over, ready to send out a leaf to save great master airplane's life. When the two snakes were suddenly pierced in midair by a razor-sharp shard of ice. What is Mobe Jun saving him for? Mobe Jun appeared within the circle like a wraith. He picked up Shang Qinghua, tossing him in Shang Chou's direction, and like one would a little chick, and then pummeled Zhu Xilong with his fists. In the ensuing ten seconds, Shang Qing Chou witnessed what a real beatdown looked like. With Zhu Xilong under Mobei Jun's craze and relentless assaults, the attacks besieging Tianlong Jun grew suddenly fiercer. Though Tianlong Jun was missing an arm and was only one against many, his poise wasn't at all diminished. Why must you be like this again? Ganging up on one person. Don't you think that the victory won by unequal advantage is immoral? A sect leader attacked him. Against a malicious and demonic monster like you, who wishes to see the world burn? What morals are you speaking of? In the next moment, that sect leader's skull split open like a garlic clove, rent into multiple chunks. Tianlong Jun pulled his hand back and smiled honestly. In the beginning, I had no malice. Nor did I find fun in the idea of the world burning. I only occasionally crossed the border, coming here to sing songs or read books. It was quite nice. However, since I've already been in residence beneath Bailu Mountain for so many years, if I don't follow through on something along the lines of your thoughts, I truly find my circumstances a bit unjustified. Yu Qingong flicked his finger, and Shan Zhu sprang three inches from its sheath. It's spiritual energy seething! Why is this so sexual? Why is Yu Qingyong not wanting to release the beast? What is happening? The bones of Tianlong Zhong's body cracked and popped, almost like his joints had been dislocated. He made a sound of surprise. As expected of a sect leader, not bad. Your master was quite mediocre, but had quite the eye for disciples and successors. 
Then Tianlong Jun reached out and grabbed Shan Su's blade directly, as if he couldn't feel a thing. But why not draw it out all the way, he said with a smile. You can't do anything to me with only this much. This is so sexual! Yu Qingyang's gaze hardened, and Shan Su jumped another half an inch from its sheath. He can't do anything to you, Lo Binghe said, sudden and cold. But what about me? Tianlong Jun's smile hadn't faded when suddenly a stream of powerful demonic chi slammed into him like a blow from an axe. His remaining arm was blasted off from his body and then whipped outside the cave by a gust of wind, hurling down and away towards the Maigu Ridge. Lo Binghe was finally taking action. In this father versus son rematch, it was finally Tian Long Jun's turn to be powerless to fight back. Lo Binghe's eyes were blindingly crimson, his face taut, and his attacks were ruthless, without the slightest hint of mercy. With both of Tian Long Jun's arms severed, he even began to look like he had been overwhelmed and backed into a corner. Meanwhile, after much difficulty, Zhu Xilong had managed to break free from Mo Bei Jun. His face was a mess of blood and gore, but when he saw his master in trouble, he rushed straight over, like all the bloodlust had gone to his head. Right at that moment, Tianlong Jun's demonic chi swept over Wu Wang, sending him flying as blood sprayed from his mouth, and Master Wu Chen ran to catch him. Zhu Xilong was about to slam into him when Xin Qingqiu saw this unfortunate turn and swept in front of Wu Chen, shielding him. As soon as Zhu Xilong saw Xin Qingqiu, a shred of clarity flashed through those bright yellow eyes, and he abruptly braked disrupting his balance as he staggered and nearly fell. He was just about to detour around Shen Qingqiu to assist Tianlong Jun. A beam of white light shot swiftly towards them. Zhu Xilong's back slammed heavily into the cave wall. He'd been impaled through the chest against the rocks. The long, slender blade buried in his chest belonged to Zhang Yang. Shen Qingqiu turned his head to see Lo Binghe slowly withdraw his hand. Tianlong Jun really serenely stood about six meters behind him. After a short while, he gracefully fell to the ground. Silence. It was over? That easily? Part of Shen Qingqiu couldn't believe it. He'd barely done anything. And it was over? He patted Shang Qinghua's shoulder. Well, didn't you say that Tianlong Jun would be hard? Shang, Qing, Shang Qinghua was still in a state of shock. He is hard. Is this victory logical? No matter how hard the boss is, he shouldn't think about flaunting his power in front of the protagonist. Isn't that the widely accepted logic? The two of them looked around. They'd come with dozens of people with full HP bars, and now barely two or three were still standing. Shin Qingqiu then looked at the two individuals who he'd previously regarded as the super hard final boss team. One was impaled against the wall and soaked in fresh blood, while the other lay flat on the ground. Together, they made a great match for descriptions like trampled and tattered doll and a puppet with its strings cut. He felt not the slightest bit of the exhilaration one usually got from a beating a final boss. The more he looked, the more he felt it was basically the same as bullying the sick or the elderly, or shamelessly ganging up on victims using strength in numbers. And they'd indeed ganged up on these two. But who could have known it would be this the re This was the result? The boss's strength was way too far below what he'd imagined. Lo Binghe turned, expression tranquil and without a drop of blood on him. Shall we kill him? He was referring to Tianlong Jun. When Zhu Xilong heard this, he grabbed Zhang Yang's blade, struggling to pull it out. A great deal of the scales on his neck had been scraped off in the battle. He exerted himself now. Blood flowed forth from his body in streams. Ever since Chen Qingqiu had learned of Gong Yi Zhao's death at Zhu Xilong's hands, a knot had existed in his heart. But this image was too unbearable. It was difficult to not feel sympathy. Though Chen Qingqiu had been screwed over countless times by his bizarre methods of repayment, Zhu Xilong had never shown him any malice. Shin Qingqiu sighed. Look at the state you're in. Why let yourself suffer so? Shu Xilong caught up, coughed up a mouthful of foamy blood and rasped, The state I'm in! He smiled bitterly. What if I said my appearance on Bailo Mountain was my actual true form? What would you think then, immortal Master Shin? It was like a bolt of lightning had struck Shin Qingqiu's forehead. 
What? So the slithering snake man from Bailu Forest was Zhu Xilong's original form? Zhu Xilong gasped for breath. My bloodline is lowly. All because my father was a simple-minded giant snake. I had this half-man, half-snake appearance from the moment my mother gave birth to me. Until I was 15, I was always hated and discarded or insulted and driven away. If not for my lord who helped me take on a man's form, even guided and support me, I would have spent my entire life as a monster that can only wriggle on the ground. He gritted his teeth. My lord gave me my first chance to become a person, and a mortal shin gave me my second. Perhaps to both of you it was only a small thing, no more effort than lifting a finger, but to me... These were favors I must repay, even if they cost me thousands of lives. An immortal Master Shen asked me why I let myself suffer. Tell me, how have I suffered? Tianlong Jun suddenly sighed. Foolish child, why say so much to him? Though he was on the ground, his pose was still as graceful as ever. If he could remove the half of his face that was deteriorated from demonic chi, he would have looked more elegant. People always believed that those of a different race have different hearts as well, he said leisurely as he stared upward. Even the person dearest to you can deceive you in the blink of an eye. Besides, it was only ever your one-sided desire to repay him. No matter what you say, he won't understand you. He'll only find it troublesome and refuse to comprehend, so why say so much? In a moment, everyone at the scene fell silent. Once a good and guileless young man, Tianlong Jun had joyfully fallen in love, yet it had been nothing more than a sham. Then for countless days and nights he'd been sealed beneath a high mountain where there was neither sun nor sky. Who had the right to stop him from resenting them? Who had the right to make him let it go and look on the bright side? Yet, Master Wu Chen said, if your distinguished self really possessed no malicious designs back then, then we were at fault for listening to slander. If so... This calamity today was something we could neither run from nor avoid. Those who sow seeds of evil will reap the rewards, for all will eventually come around. He brought his palms together, but even if it meant ingesting poison. Benefactor Sue wanted to see you, so how can you condemn her for deceiving you? Tianlong Jun startled a little, and then raised his head. Shen Qingqiu was also stunned. He knew Master Wu Chen would never lie, yet... The version of the story he told next was completely different from what others had known to be true. Back at Zhao Hua Monastery, said Master Wu Chen, because this one didn't wish to subject Benefactor Su to criticism when she'd already passed, and because this one promised to keep it secret, he was unable to speak the truth. The old palace master brought Benefactor Su back to Huan Hua Palace by force. She absolutely refused to obey orders, refused to trick you into going to the site of ambush where several dozen arrays had been set in advance. The old palace master only discovered she was pregnant when subjecting her to torture within the water prison. Forcibly aborting the fetus would have endangered her life, and on top of that, Benefactor Sue was resisting with all her might. So the old palace master gave her a bowl of poison, that poison fatal to the demon race. He told her that as long as she was willing to drink, he'd let her out to see you. Benefactor Sue drank what the old palace master gave her and then left the palace alone, but she didn't realize the change takes but an instant. The situation was already other than what she thought. The old palace master had switched the site of the attack to Bailu Mountain, where the two of you had met in the past. Tianlong Jun was completely stunned. His body was mangled and blood still stained the corner of his mouth. Despite this, he struggled to raise his head like he wanted to hear more clearly. There was an indiscernible pity, pitifulness to him. This one met Benefactor Sue on the road to Bailu Mountain. At the time, it hadn't been long since she drank the poison. She was covered in blood and it dripped with every step she took. This one listened to the few lines she'd gasped out and guessed the general situation. Unable to bear deceiving her, he told her that several days before, Tianlong Jun had already been sealed for all eternity. Only then did she realize that her master had told her a monstrous lie. Not only the location, but even the time had been false, all for the sake of making her drink the poison. In accordance with her pleas, this one helped her avoid the Huanhua Palace disciples who'd come to capture her, and then escorted her to Low River's upper reaches. After that, he never saw any trace of her again. Tianlong Jun, Benefactor Su might indeed have not been a wholly good person. 
Originally, she stood high as the next Juanhua Palace master with great expectations upon her. The comparisons to Lo Binghei. Oh, my God. In the beginning, her decision to approach you might not have been made with good intentions. But afterward, which is it? Did you maliciously bewitch her? Did she set you up and deceive you? Or were both of you simply unable to help your feelings? He's actually both of them. Lo Binghei is both of them, but we'll, we'll talk about that in the discussion. This one is an outsider, so he can know nothing of your heart. But what he does know and what he did see was benefactors who were refusing to listen to the orders of the master who'd raised her for over a decade. Even when tormented in the water prison, she refused to say anything, refuses to trick or harm you. If not as a last resort, what mother in this world would drink that kind of poison? It wasn't that she didn't care about you, but she was without alternative. Yet the world is pitiless. And so you passed each other by. Tianlong Jun's lips seemed to tremble slightly. A moment passed. Then he said, is that so? Right after those three words, he asked again, truly. This one swears upon his life that his words contain not a single falsehood, said Master Wu Chen. Tianlong Jun turned his head to look at Shen Qingcho and Yu Qingyan. As if seeking confirmation, he asked, truly. He didn't even care whether someone was in the know. He was just asking anyone he could. Unable to say anything, Yu Qingyang silently lowered his head. It was unclear what he thought. Shen Qingcho deliberated over further and then finally gave a slow nod. Perhaps the old palace master originally had no intention of vilifying and harming Tianlong Jun. But as he watched his disciple grow closer and closer to him, he must have regretted sending Su Shijian to, to approach the demon. He allowed her to leave his control and fall in mutual love with Tianlong Jun, even conceiving Lo Binghei. So the old palace master made up his mind. He distorted the truth and cherry-picked the details. He has orchestrations transformed Tianlong Jun into a matchless fiend who wanted to overturn the three realms. And so, he'd brought ruin to so many lives and so many years. The smattering of snowflakes on Tianlong Jun's eyelashes trembled with their movement. And then, like all his strength had suddenly left him, he lay down once more and he sighed, All right. In any case, finally something less terrible unfolds. Shen Qingxiu turned his head to look at Lo Binghei. He'd listened from beginning to end, but it was like he'd heard nothing at all. Like none of this had concerned him. He even let out a light laugh. With this truth out in the open, the knot within Tianlong Jun's heart had naturally come undone, but to Lo Binghei, the cruelty of the situation hadn't lessened in the least. Regardless of whether it was because his parents hated him or because they had given up on him, in the end, he'd been thrown away. Black smoke and purple miasma continued to spew from Jin Mo without pause, and the sounds of slaughter from below grew clearer and clearer. My Gurij's descent was still ongoing. Just how much distance remained before they reached Lo Bang's low, low River's frozen surface? Yu Qingyang took several steps towards where Mo was embedded in the wall. The situation has thus far unraveled, Shen Qingxiu said. Bring an end to this, Tianlong Jun. If Tianlong Jun stopped now, it wouldn't be too late. But if he continued to supply Mo with demonic chi, then their only option to prevent the merge would be to kill him. Now that all was said and done, Shen Qingxiu didn't particularly wish for Tianlong Jun to actually die. After all, to end up in this state due to falling in love was just really unfortunate. To demand his life on top of that, what kind of boss is this pitiful? Yet Tianlong Jun let out a stifled laugh. The sound echoing through the cave, Peak, look, Peak Lord Shen, he said, tilting his head like he'd found something incredibly funny. As I am, I can't even maintain Zhu Xilong's human form anymore. At that moment, Shen Qingzhou didn't yet realize the meaning within Tianlong Jun's words. He only felt something lurch within his heart. Having fought with you all for so long, the toll on this body of mine was no small matter, said Tianlong Jun slow and measured. Who do you think has been sustaining Zhen Mo and supplying it with demonic chi all this time? His words were neither fast nor slow, but as they entered Shen Qingzhou's ears, one, each one seemed to plunge him into icy water, and his neck slowly stiffened. 
You should be telling someone to bring an end to this. Yes. Only that person isn't me. Oh my gosh. Jiao Long Jun's arms were broken beyond repair and Zhu Xilong was impaled against the stone wall. Master Wu Chen was supporting Wu Wang, who had his whose head blow, bled profusely. Mo Bei Jun had Shang Qinghua dangling in his hold, and Yu Qingyang stood beside Shen Qingshou. Only Lo Binghei stood directly opposite of Jin Mo's position. His head lowered as he leisurely adjusted his sleeves. Lo Binghei, come here, Shen Qingshou said solemnly. Lo Binghei shook his head once, only once, but very resolutely. You lied to me again, Shen Qingshou said dismayed. Lo Binghei's movements paused and he asked, Shizun, I said I would help you against Tianlong Jun. I can kill him for you right now and right away, so how can you say I lied to you? Tianlong Jun smiled, letting the enemy go to cover for, one own, for one's own work. That was quite a good move, but unfortunately I'm not very useful, so in the end he had to take action upon himself. Upon hearing the words, letting the enemy go to cover for one's own work, Shen Xingzhou's heart became increasingly uneasy. Did Lo Binghei purposely give Jin Mo to Tianlong Jun? After all, Tianlong Jun's do mushroom, bo do, do mushroom body had deteriorated faster within Jin Mo in his possession. So even if the sword was given to him, it couldn't have posed much of a threat to Lo Binghei. Perhaps Shen Xingzhou was too disoriented and allowed his thoughts to show on his face because Lo Binghei said sorrowfully, Shizun, what are you thinking now? He did steal Jin Mo. It's just that Jin Mo still recognizes me as its master. You said before that you would rather trust me and accept the consequences than not assume you can't trust me at all. Why do you again not trust me? I've trusted you many times, Shin Xingxiu said slowly. Up until now, I still trusted you. Is that so, said Lo Binghei. His face twisted into a smile, but I don't dare trust Shizun anymore. Why are they doing this? Why is this happening? Why? That smile was incredibly uncanny. Shin Xingxiu sensed something was wrong, so he softened his expression and tone. What has gotten into you this time? The moment he softened, Lo Binghei suddenly stopped smiling. His appearance was full of sorrow and despair. Shizun, I've said this before. The times you're with them are really when you're happiest. To begin with, Shin Xingxiu had yet to figure out who the them referred to. Lo Binghei paced slowly back and forth before the stone wall where Jinmo was embedded, and he laughed in self-mockery. Every time I asked Shizun to leave with me, you never agreed. Not even once. Oh my god, are we really doing this? When you did come, it was because I demanded it by force, not because you came willingly. But when they ask you to stay, you never hesitate. He looked at Shin Qingxiu. Shizun, you don't smile often. I love seeing you smile. But whenever I recall that you only smile like that when you're with them, it... He said very, very quietly. It hurts me very, very much. Are you fucking kidding me? I, you brat! I thought we... Why are you being ridiculous? Why are you being a child, Lo Binghei? You're being stupid. Shin Qingxiu finally understood. Them... Referred to Sangjong Mountain. That day in the bamboo house, Liu Chingge had suddenly opened the windows to investigate. So it really had been that he'd sensed the hint of murderous intent Lo Binghei had let while loitering around outside, as well as the aura of rage and despair. Instead of leaving, he'd stayed to hear the laughter within the bamboo house, as well as that single mmm of agreement that he'd engraved all of it within his heart. That's why you're angry? said Xin Ching Cho. Angry. Lo Binghei spat darkly two words out. I hate. Then I hate myself. He paced quickly with his irritation, his hands clasped behind his back. I hate how I'm useless. I hate how I can never keep anyone. How no one, no one has ever chosen me. Everyone in the cave was unable to make any sudden moves. Lo Binghei was currently maintaining Jin Mo's energy supply and nobody wanted him to suddenly lash out. By doing this, you mean to force him to choose between the two? Xu Xilong asked. And Xu Xilong realizes how ridiculous this is. Lo Binghe paused and shook his head. Choose between the two? No, that's not it. I know that if he chooses, Shizun definitely won't pick me. Oh my god, no. Lo Binghe, quit bitching. <laughs> so it's fine if he has no choice to make. 
slight flush infuse his stark white face, derived from a kind of strange excitement. This time I've learned my lesson. No, you haven't learned your lesson! Have you been in this story at all? The last three volumes? If Sangjong Mountain ceases to exist, everything will be fine, right? That way Shizun will only have me. One part of everything else that has happened, Lo Bing Hei. Oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? Did did losing did losing Xin Ching Cho the last two times teach you nothing? What? Master Wu Chin chanted sutras and pressed his palms together, saying, Amitabha, he said, and then he said, Benefactor Lo, you're possessed. Maybe it's Jin Mo, like, feeding his darkest thoughts, but still. Lo Binghe burst into a loud, unrestrained laughter. If you leave him no choice, then of course you can't be abandoned, Master Wu Chin continued, but how will you deal with Lord Peak Shin's actions and behavior towards you afterwards? Shizun, if changing Peak is gone, I can build you another. Lo Binghe said gently, it's fine if you resent me. It's fine if you hate me. I won't make any great demands. If you're unsatisfied, you can hit me. Try to kill me. After all, I won't die. As long as, long as you don't leave me. He spoke so earnestly. Truly, I only have this one wish. <sighs> Lo Binghe's smile was twisted. His pupils dilated. The blood red irises rimming then periodically expanding and contracting. Jinmo overflowed with purple light. It was impossible to tell if he was controlling the sword or if the sword was controlling him. As Shin Ching observed Lo Binghe's disoriented, chi deviated appearance, a bitter taste filled his mouth and he couldn't bring himself to speak. Other than Sangjong Mountain, this world has thousands of things that immortal Master Shin values, said Zhu Xilong. Are you going to destroy all of them as well? Yes. Yes, said Lo Binghe, smiling. Why not? He tilted his head and then suddenly exploded with rage. Shut him up! Mo Bei Jun heard these words, thought for a moment, and then threw a punch at Zhu Xilong's face. Tianlong Jun studied Lo Binghe, and pity flashed across his gaze. Jin Mo has already invaded his mind, he sighed. He's gone mad. This was the one and only time since his first meeting with Lo Binghe that he looked like something of a father. But Lo Binghe didn't notice at all. He just nodded and smiled. Yes, I've gone mad. Upon hearing him admit to his lunacy, Shin Ching Cho's heart spasmed with a dull pain. Binge, get away from that sword first, he said quietly. The farther, the better. As he gently coaxed him, he secretly placed a hand on Zhu Ya's hilt, the action concealed by his wide sleeve. Lo Binghe laughed. It's no use, Shizun. You don't need to do this. The nicer you are to me, the more afraid I become. As he spoke, his right hand made a slight gesture upward. In an instant, Jin Mo's purple chi overflowed. Zhu Xilong spat a mouthful of congested blood. The punch a moment ago had only shut him up for a little while. He calmly said, pitiful. Pitiful, Lo Binghe muttered. That's right, I'm pitiful. It'd be fine if it's out of pity too. Will Shizun stay by my side just this once? Tears rolled down Lo Binghe's cheeks. And his pupils reddened as he gritted his teeth. Shizun, you've let go of me again and again, and I always, always, anyone, anything. They all become a reason to abandon me, until sometimes you don't even need a reason. It's always like this. Suddenly, Shang Qinghua fell to the ground with a thud. Shen Ching Cho also unconsciously grabbed onto the stone wall. The entire ground started to shake violently. Maigu Ridge's descent had sped up. He's gone mad, Shidi. Yu Qingyong said mildly, how will you deal with this? Lo Binghe sneered and backed up two steps and then abruptly grabbed Jin Mo's hilt. The tremors became stronger and stronger. Looking out through the hole in the cave, one could see innumerable mountain peaks of different heights jutting through the rolling clouds. Shin Qingxiao was about to pull out Zhu Yao when suddenly a blinding white light shone from behind him. Yu Qingong had drawn his sword first. The sword's how ripped through the drifting snow and dark purple cheese. Shan Zhu had been unsheathed. Mo Bei Ju saw Yu Qingong point the sword at Lo Binghe and stepped up to fight. Shan Zhu's spiritual energy surged and Mo Bei Jun was blown away before they even made contact. Mo Bei Jun looked like he'd never expected that a day would come where someone would send him flying. In a flash, he'd been thrown off Maigu Ridge, that expression still glued onto his face. Shen Qinghua seemed frightened out of his wits. He snatched up a sword and rushed forward, but Shen Qingzhou quickly grabbed him. What are you doing? Shen Qinghua roared, well, fuck, he can't fly! And with that, he leapt down. 
Shinshinsho braved the gales and flurries of snow to peer down through the rupture. He just managed to see Shang Qinghua riding his sword and catching Mobejun, still 300 meters above the ice. After confirming he wouldn't fall to his death, Shen Qingzhou didn't even give himself time to sigh in relief and quickly turned back around. Lo Binghe and Yu Qingang were already dueling. As expected, Lo Binghe's power was terrifying, but Shen Qingzhou hadn't fully expected a fully unsheathed Shan Su to be so powerful, capable of evenly matching a berserk Lo Binghe. Shen Qingzhou felt the fluctuating spiritual energy and demonic chi reverberate as they passed on his eardrums and throat. He could tell that this cavern would soon collapse and rush to the stone wall. He grabbed Shen Mo barehanded and with a forceful yell, yanked it out! Oh my god! Although he'd extracted the blade, Maigu Ridge's descent didn't slow. Lo Binghe saw the situation and moved forward to seize the sword, yet Yu Qingyang didn't give him the chance. Using the tip of Shan Su's blade, he carved a dazzling trail visible to the naked eye, and an enormous barrier marked with complicated in incantations and seals formed an invisible cage trapping Lo Binghe from within. Seeing that Shen Qingqiu had already acquired Jin Mo, Yu Qingyang said sternly, Go! How could he go in that sort of situation? Shen Qingqiu immediately shook his head, and he was about to toss Jin Mo to Yu Qingyan when he felt something falter beneath him. It wasn't his legs that had given out, it was the ground. The cave had finally collapsed. On Maigu Ridge's second level, Shen Qingqiu dug Chu Yu Qingyan out from beneath a pile of rubber, rubble. Sect leader! Shizhong! Zaymin Xiong! Yu Qingyang's complexion was slightly pale, and blood trickled from his lips. He swallowed once as a fourth sing down a mouthful of warm blood. He opened his eyes and glanced at Shen Qingzhou. Where are the others? The internal structure of Maigu Ridge was now like a disoriented honeycomb, with cave after cave all connected. Shen Qingzhou gave his surroundings a once over. I don't see Master Wu Qin or Tianlong Jun. They might be buried here, or they could have tumbled with the piles of rubble down to other caves. He turned and said, Shizhong, wh when did you get injured? Yu Qingyang didn't answer. Do you have Jin Mo? Shen Qingzhou showed him the sword. Here, my guru is still falling, but the merge has probably yet to finish. Shizhong, take the sword and head down and destroy it. When Shen Qingzhou was supporting him, Yu Qingyang said slowly, and you? Of course, Shen Qingzhou would head back to look for Lo Binghei. But he avoided the question. Shizhong, this injury of yours isn't normal. Exactly what happened? Yu Qingyang provided an irrelevant answer. Originally, I didn't want to, but in the end, I'm an impulsive person. Shen Qingxiu thought these words were strange, but he didn't have a mind to think about them carefully and continued to walk while supporting him. Shizhong, can you still walk? You head down first. Destroy the sword and have Mu Shidi heal you. Leave Lo Binghei to me. As Shen Qingxiu was supporting him, Yu Qingyang could stand with some difficulty, all the while dripping flesh, fresh blood onto the ground. Thinking he was fine, Shen Qingzhou let go, but once he did, Yu Qingyang didn't remain standing for long before he unexpectedly collapsed again. Shen Qingzhou blanched with shock and then hurried to help him up again. Shaymin Xiang. Shaymin Xiang. After a brief examination, even with his superficial medical knowledge, he could tell Yu Qingyang's current condition was horrible. Yu Qingyang's expression was vacant, like he hadn't heard anything Shen Qingxiu said. However, those times at Jinlan City and during Lo Binghei's siege of the mountain, I kept calm and took the big picture into account. Thinking back on it, it would have been better to be impulsive. At the sight of him so drowsy and about to fall asleep, Shen Qingxiu itched to pinch Yu Qingyang hard on the spot above his upper lip to wake him up, but he didn't dare overstep. He could only yell in his ear to stop him from passing out. Oh, Shizhong, wake up! You weren't wrong! Yu Qingyang closed his eyes and shook his head. He drew a breath and then another violent coughing fit befell him, causing Shen Qingxiu to jump in terror. Blood flowed out incessantly with the coughs. With difficulty, he said, Return, Shan Zhu, to its sheath for me. Shen Qingxiu hurriedly dropped down next to him. Shan Zhu's blade was still emitting a blinding white light. He returned the sword to its sheath and held it out to Yu Qingyang. At this, Yu Qingyang's complexion finally improved somewhat, and the most arduous of his breaths eased. He stared at the hand Shen Qingzhou had used to handle Shan Zhu in a daze, 
And then instead of taking it, he said, if I perish here, you must bring Shan Su back to Wanjian Peak for me. Shin Chikcha was shocked. What did you say? Perish? Yu Qingyong's injuries were so severe he was likely to die? Shan Su is so incredibly powerful, but I never draw it against enemies, he said. You must have attempted to guess why. Shin Chingchong nodded. Not only had he attempted, many people had. Shan Su is my life, said Yu Qingyong. Do you understand what this means? Shin Ching Cho absolutely didn't, but he knew that definitely wasn't just a figure of speech for loving your sword more than your own life. He also knew that what Yu Ching Yang's next words would be would be, without a doubt, a secret they'd never told anyone before. Sure enough, Yu Ching Yang said, every time I draw Shan Tzu, it consumes my life force. As soon as those words were said, Shin Ching Cho felt like Shan Tzu he held instantly became a thousand times heavier. No wonder Shan Tzu never left its sheath. No wonder Yu Ching Yang never drew his sword unless as a last resort. She's on you. This is because of a key, qi deviation? Shin Ching Cho said, stunned. By using his life force to channel a spiritual energy, he bound his life to his sword. If not due to a terrible accident during cultivation in which he'd entered a qi deviation, why else would Yu Ching Yang cultivate this kind of unnatural path? Yu Ching Yang said slowly, are we, is he going to be Chi Gay? Is it? Is it? What are we doing? At age 15, I entered Shangding Peak, my heart preoccupied and desperate for success. I failed in my venture to become one with the sword, falling instead into this state, a state contrary to my initial goals, which left me with untold lifelong regrets. As he spoke, the vestige of color his coughing had brought to his face suddenly vanished without a trace. Shin Xingzhou hurried to interrupt him. Oh, don't talk anymore. This isn't the time to speak. I'll take you to Mushidi first. The two of them walked pa several painful steps before Yu Qingyang suddenly said in a low voice, I'm sorry. Shin Xingzhou did not understand why he was apologizing. Yu Qingyang had never wronged him in any way. If anything, it was he who should be sorry, always slacking off and screwing around. He'd even dumped a mountain of troubles on Yu Qingyang, forcing him to take responsibility and bear the headache of cleaning up his messes. But Yu Qingyang's next words which shakes Shin Ching Cho to the core. I'm truly sorry. Even his voice trembled. Even though I wanted to return as soon as possible, even though I wanted to come and get you immediately, I made a mess of things. You were right. In the end, I'm an impulsive person. After that, Shizun destroyed all the tendons, bones, and meridians in my body and then shut me inside the Lingxi cave for more than a year. My entirety was broken down to be rebuilt anew. I screamed, I yelled, but it was for no use. For an entire year inside that pitch black cave, no matter how crazed I became, how hysterical, no one listened closely to what I said. No one let me out. I pushed myself as hard as I could, but by the time I returned, Chu Manor had already been destroyed for some time. Ah! Oh! From deep within Shin Ching Cho's mind came the sound of something tearing. In that instant, all of Yu Ching Yang's past ardent concern, his wordless protectiveness, all kinds of scenes, all manner of details connected within his mind like a merry-go-round, clear beyond compare. No wonder, no matter how Shin Ching Cho dug his own grave, the sect leader had never made life difficult for him and instead remained infinitely forgiving, infinitely patient. No wonder the rescuer Shin Zhu had been waiting, the rescuer that Shin Zhu had been waiting for never returned. Yu Ching Yan, Shin Ching Cho, Yu Qi, Shin Zhu. That's how it was. That's how it was! really did not mean to not return, said Yu Qingyang. Only, it is really true that the world is pitiless. And so the two of us passed each other by. With each line he spoke, the more violently fresh blood surged. 
Shinshinksho supported him by the arm, pausing twice as long for every step they took. Don't talk anymore, he sighed. He already knew everything that happened next. Just let me finish speaking this one time, Yu Qingyang said resolutely. As you always say, sorry is nothing but an empty word, completely useless. I also never explained myself, but today I must let you hear, not, not to ask for your forgiveness or sympathy, because if I don't say it now, it'll be too late. Shin Xingzhou's heart became, ac became acrid, his eyes hot, too late, it was already too late. Shin Zhu was no longer here. Maybe he died, or maybe like Shin Yan, his soul had been transported into another world, but no matter which, he would never be able to hear Yu Qingyang's words. Never, ever. The system set out a series of notifications. Hidden character one, Zhu Shi Long, completion rate 100%. Hidden character two, Tian Long Jun, completion rate 100%. Hidden character three, Su Ji Yan, completion rate 100%. Plot hole filling target number one, Shin Ching Shou, completion rate 100%. Plot hole filling target number two, Yu Ching Yang, completion rate 100%. Met basic criteria for character completion. The system scan found no obvious logical gaps. B points per achievement, plus 300. Total sum, 1,500. Congratulations! By upgrading rather a lot of things to roast, you have unlocked the achievement. Readable if nothing else is available. Satisfaction points at zero. In this situation, you can substitute B points when paying for drop cost of key items. Do you accept? The chime of positive notifications formed a cascade, brimming with a joyful atmosphere, yet Shin Xingqiu had never been more depressed. He said, what's the point? Exactly what was the system? What was the point of its existence? So he could know exactly how unfortunate these people were? So he could personally witness the most tragic ways the world could screw over people? Or so he could drive Lo Binghe to insanity. Everyone said Lo Binghe had gone mad. Even he, he himself had smiled and admitted it. Jin Mo, which Lo Binghe had finally managed to suppress after a million words of struggle in the original work. He had gained the upper hand in this struggle and invaded Lo Binghe's mind. This wasn't a result of one or two events, but a slow accumulation over time until it had finally completely erupted. Numerous signs had long since made themselves apparent, but Shin Ching Cho had never noticed. Or perhaps he should say, he never realized that Lo Binghe was actually so insecure to the point of having an inferiority complex. First, he thought Lo Binghe was unbelievably cruel and evil. Then he thought Lo Binghe was unspeakably strong and bright. Looking back, the symptoms of Jin Mo's invasion of Lo Binghe's mind had appeared as early as Zhao Hua Monastery. When Lo Binghe heard his backstory, he'd received a massive shock. In his moment of greatest panic, he'd reached out to Shin Ching Cho, pleading for his Shizun to leave with him. But Shin Ching Cho hadn't taken Lo Bing He's hand, and instead had made Lo Bing He leave first. At that time, Lo Bing He's psyche had started to grow incredibly unstable. What he needed wasn't a path of safe retreat, but to be together with Shin Ching Cho. Even if he was trapped in Zhao Hua Monastery and unable to retreat, even if he was surrounded and attacked by everyone present, either outcome was better than leaving alone. To a Lo Binghe in that state of mind, having to leave alone was as good as being thrown away, like he had been when Su Jiang willingly drank that poison. It was exactly as Lo Binghe himself had said. He wasn't forcing Shin Xing to choose between two options because he was completely certain he knew the answer down to his very bones that Shin Xing Shou would one day abandon him. His entire mind had flooded with terror of and anxiety from speculating over something yet to happen. How could he not go completely insane? Yu Qingyang's steps had become increasingly unsteady to the point where he almost couldn't stand anymore. Shin Xing Shou had never seen the sect leader appear so weak. Yu Qingyang had always been solid, been solid and full of strength. Even if he never spoke too much or too little, even if he lacked any aggressiveness and was gentle and affable, he was also extremely dependable and dignified. Now, not only was he having difficulty walking, he even spoke more than usual. He likely really thought he wasn't going to make it. 
Shin Xing Cho was almost dragging him along by this point. As he walked, he said, Zay Ming Xiang, hold on. You absolutely cannot pass out. Everything will be all right in a moment. Yu Ching Yang smiled bitterly. All these years, you've never mentioned the past. And you've only ever called me Zhang Min Shizhong. Are you determined to never call me Chige again? The bones and veins in Shin Ching Cho's sword hand bulged. Yu Ching Yang wanted to hear Shin Zhu call him Chige. But he wasn't Shin Zhu. He dredged up the original flavor's cold and hateful enemy energy and then adamantly refused i won't he could not raise the flag in drama and novels whenever a character achieved their final wish and finished speaking their last words they immediately kicked the bucket their desires satisfied i didn't hear anything you just said shin ching Shou said harshly hold on keep going yu ching on closed his eyes and sighed zhao zhu don't call me that he didn't dare think about how Yu Qingyang had felt in the original work after Lo Binghe chopped up Shin Xing Shou's legs and sent them to Sangjong Mountain in a brocade box. He didn't dare imagine what kind of emotions Yu Qingyang had had held as he walked unflinchingly into Lo Binghe's trap despite knowing that there was no return until he was pierced with 10,000 arrows. To think that a lifetime single moment of loyalty had actually to be repaid with so much. And Yu Qingyang hadn't even been able to tell Shin Qing Cho the reason why he hadn't come to rescue him. The Shin Ching Chu had been so full of resentment and terror, who'd helped Lo Binghe lead him into that trap. Why hadn't he told him earlier? It was just like Shin Ching Chu and Lo Binghe. Why hadn't he told him earlier? If he hadn't been so cavalier, so full of conjecture, Lo Binghe might never have darkened. He could have remained the sweet and bashful disciple he'd been on Xi Jing Peak. Even if they backed up 10,000 steps, back to when he'd forced to sh back when he'd been forced to shove Lo Binghe into the endless abyss, Shin Xing Shou could have used a completely different method to achieve his goal. He might not have even needed to think about it. Only now did Shin Xing Shou understand that if he wanted Lo Binghe to go down into the abyss, it was very possible that if he had just but said the word, Lo Binghe would have obeyed and jumped. Shin Xing Shou had never considered this possibility. He hadn't believed that a person could be so foolish that Lo Binghe could be so obedient. But the truth was that Lo Binghe really was that foolish and obedient. Shin Ching Shou had twisted and turned, taken all sorts of detours. He'd taken the far road and become utterly lost, not knowing how to proceed, full of regret and sorrows, and he could only sigh, if only I had known. But in this world, there was no, if only I had known. As they turned down past the cavern, Shin Ching Shou suddenly saw two figures caked in dirt. As soon as he made out the two round and shiny bald heads, he blurted out, Master Wu Chen, Master Wu Wang. The short monk who was carrying someone much taller than himself was Master Wu Chen. One of the wooden prosthetic legs was missing. Walking alone on a single leg was already difficult, and on top of that, he had no hands to spare for a palms-together greeting. Refusing to be discourteous, he chose to recite some extra sutras and said, Ah, Mitaba, Peak Lord Shen, we finally found you. What happened to sect leader you? Ever since he'd closed his eyes, Yu Qingyang had been drowsily leaning against Shin Ching Cho. Shin Ching Cho said, Zhang Min Xiang, he was struck on the head by a rock. What about Master Wu Wang? Injured by that Tianlong Jun's demonic chi and unconscious for now. With the caves collapsed, those demons completely disappeared. Shin Ching Cho pulled out Zhu Ya and handed it over. Master, can I ask you to take my Zhizhong and Master Wu Wang and leave my Gu Ridge by sword? What about Peak Lord Shen? asked Wu Chen. I will deal with my own disciple. Shin Ching Cho said concisely. If Peak Lord Shin is willing to calmly face him, there could be nothing better. <laughs> Wu Chen said respectfully, he knows what's up. I am ashamed of myself, said Shin Ching Cho. But I wish to resolve these affairs before something irreparable occurs. I leave Zhang Man Shizhong to Master Wu Chen. After you head down, please take him to Shai, to Shan Sao Peak's new Shidi. This Shin is deeply grateful. Wu Chen put down Wu Wang and received Zhu Ya with both hands. He, he bowed and then suddenly said, Inner demons arise due to obsession, which means the name of Lo Bing He's sword itself. Shin Ching Cho startled. Is Master trying to say that to eliminate his inner demons, we must cure his obsession? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Oh, well, shit. Oh, my God. Huh. I, 
I'm gonna need to go back through this, calm myself down, and then come back with y'all, and we need to talk about this. How do we go from having an amazing, fun, little, flirtatious romp last chapter set that I was like, oh, look at this, to being like, are you ready to have your heart ripped out? <laughs> very nervous about volume four if I'm being quite honest because the the way that this the way that this has positioned itself I'm like oh we're going to be we're going to be getting the climax felt like it was here and then it was kind of like oh that was kind of anticlimactic and then it, did, then it got climactic all over again it was like what the fudge so now there's a lot of loose threads like we've got to next chapter set to round out volume three we've got to go back to it's just being shin ching cho and lo bing hey which is really funny because we bookended remember remember back at the start of this volume when shin ching cho was under house arrest <laughs> remember back at the start of that volume when lo bing hey was like you're not allowed to leave the west wing and shin ching cho was like fuck you i'm going <laughs> and so now and now it's the polar opposite where lo bing hey is stuck in the cave and shin ching cho is like well i'm gonna go find him and and sort this out and finally face things but we're gonna talk about that okay we're gonna talk about all this and if if there gets to be a little Binghei apologist, then there gets to be Shin Xingqiu apologist as well. And I'm going to defend my my green peacock for parts of this. I'm going to defend him in in this because I think Lo Binghei. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? But I get it. We're we're going to talk about it. It's going to be a long discussion probably about this chapter set, but whatever. Uh, but g case in point is instead of running away or wanting to run away, Shin Xingqiu is actively choosing to go find Lo Binghei. And that's probably where we're, gonna go, where we're gonna leave this chapter set. But there's still a lot that's unsaid and undetermined. So let's real quick point out what we still have to deal with. And that is the merging. That is the merging and Jin Mo. We've got to take care of Jin Mo. Um, Jin Mo needs to be destroyed, technically. Um, I don't know how that's, I'm assuming I'm assuming Shin Xingqiu took Jinmo with him. We'll see. And to destroy him, but that's gonna stop that. We don't know about Lu Chinge and the others and what they're doing. Uh, Shen Qinghua. <laughs> Shen Qinghua and Mo Bei Jun. Look, I'm just gonna go ahead and go ahead and say it, and I'm probably gonna say it later, but Shen Qinghua did not want to lose out on that giant icy dick. <laughs> That's my theory. We're going to talk about it here in a little bit. But yeah, that's my theory there. Um, so yeah, ha ha ha. But there's that. And then um, otherwise, it's mainly Lo Bing Hei. And then the fact of if Chu Ying, uh, Chu, uh, if you, get my names all wrong here, if you Ching Yong is going to live or not. And then the aftermath of all of this, right? And then the aftermath, which... Uh, remember a few weeks ago? Remember a few weeks ago when I was like, I think that it's like 98% chance that it's Liu Chingye. I think it's like a 2% chance that it's Yu Ching Yong. <laughs> and then MXTX is like, gotcha, bitch. And I'm like, ah, yes. So, all right, fair game. We're going to talk about it in this, but oh my God. So yeah, so there's a lot, basically, there's a lot of loose threads that still need to get wrapped up. It feels like we're at the climax because the system seems to recognize it as such. Um, so sure, if we wrap up, if Lo Binghei gets rescued next chapter set from the cave and him and Shin Ching Cho finally freaking talk, finally have the chance to communicate, they keep getting denied the chance to communicate this whole time, but if they finally get the chance to communicate, that'd be great. And then they do that next chapter set. We're done with volume three. Well, hell, there's like 400 pages back there. I don't feel like this is going to be Return of the King <laughs> where there's like five different endings. So I'm like, is that is that all going to be just epilogue? Which usually with an MXTX story, the last book is a lot of epilogue, but maybe that's it. That's not what I anticipated going into this, to be quite honest with you. I did not anticipate a lot of things 
going into this chapter set, which is what we got. And I was like, oh my God. So uh, there is a lot to like about this chapter set and a lot that I want to break down what MXTX is doing and, and go with that. But let's, first of all, Reiki has been so kind to give us the chapter titles for chapter 78 and 79. Let's look at them. Chapter 78 is called Past Faces Long Gone. Which definitely talking about the past, talking about uh, Sushi Yon, talking about all of this. And then former affection is lost forever. Which is Yu Ching Yan. He was Chi Gay. It makes sense. I, I'm actually really happy with that revelation. It makes sense now because when you look back on it, every time. Every time Shin Ching Cho has made a choice, Yu Ching Yan's been like, okay, all right, we'll go with it. Sure thing. And he's always kind of like had a close eye on Shin Ching Cho and he's been watching him really closely, but he's been there from the beginning. He was there when he first transmigrated and woke up. There was Yu Ching Yang. He's always been there and supporting Shin Ching Cho. And it's almost, and he kind of establishes that it, part of it is to repay him for not being there to rescue him. But it's like, oh my God, I... It all makes sense. For a, for a brief second, there was a part of me that was like, if he dies, I guess that leaves Shin Ching Cho to be with Lo Bing A. But I don't want Yu Ching Yang to die. I want him to live. And, I want, and I'm sure Shin Ching Cho would make the point of saying he doesn't have to die. Because Shin Ching Cho makes a really good point. He's like, Yu Ching Yang, it believes he's avenging Shin Zhu. And Shin Yang's like, I'm not Shin Zhu. So whatever affections you and him had towards each other, he's like, I'm not that guy. So I don't have that towards you. So sorry, those affections aren't there, but I don't want you to die because I like you. You're a nice person. And it's like, yeah. So again, I, I don't want you Ching Yang to die. I hope they're able to save him, but I can't believe it was him. I was, it just pulled the wool over my eyes. I was for sure that it was Liu Chingay. I would have bet money on it. I would have lost money. So... Good on you, MXTX, for, for beating the odds. <laughs> Remember when I thought he was a bad guy? <laughs> I really was suspicious of, of Yu Ching Yang this whole time. I was suspicious of him. I thought he was the villain because he was acting weird at times and was being very mysterious. Well, he was acting weird and mysterious because he's had it out for Shin Ching Cho the entire time. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the, the image for this chapter set. But, um, but yeah. These chapters, they they had a lot in them. So we need to talk about it. So Shin Ching Cho's like, you know what? We need to solve the problem first and then we can we can fix the Rex later. So let's let's go into this. Let's go into Lo Bing Hei here. And Shin Ching Cho, our sweet peacock. None of this is getting changed except for we have our our, our B points are gonna upgrade. So we get an upgrade of 1,500 B points. So we are currently at a 3,080. Good job. And there's talks of possibly like transporting them over to be satisfaction points. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, hey, remember when I was like, remember when I was wondering, oh, how are we going to do these heartbreak and anger points? How are we going to address them? <laughs> Guess what? Now we can. <laughs> we also still have the binding rope and the jade pendant, which we could use next chapter set. That jade pendant's coming out. Don't think it's not. It's going to. He's going to give it back to Lo Binghe and be like, Baka, Baka, what you doing? You know? So we're going to talk about that. But he's going to give that damn pendant back. I don't know if he's going to use the binding rope or trade it in. I don't know. But so he's got more B points back. Good on you. Um, and, and he's completed most of the story. Most of the plot hole filling in has been completed. So good on us too. But so basically the idea is that Jin Mo has been using Lo Bing Hei and getting it to where Lo Bing Hei is okay with the merge. But okay. And here's the thing. I was getting really frustrated with Lo Bing Hei, and we're going to talk about it. I was getting so frustrated with him in this chapter set, and I was like, mm. And then whenever they were like, oh, Jin Mo's in possessed his mind and drove him crazy, it's like, okay, he's basically taken over his mind. And I am a little bit sad about that because then at that point, it's been ever since back in volume two 
people in the comments have been like, oh, well, Jinmo has all of these effects. And and I kind of wish I hadn't known that. I kind of wish that people hadn't been pushing that in trying to defend Lo Binghei in the comments. A lot of people have been like, well, it's kind of Jinmo's fault. And I kind of wish I didn't know that, that I could have gone into this chapter set without that knowledge because I was like, well, but you don't really get to fully see it in practice until now. So comments are important <laughs> and they can spoil people. So be careful. Um, but yeah, that part, I wish I, I wish that I hadn't read the comments for that portion. So it could have maybe hit a little harder about Jinmo possessing Lo Binghei. Cause I think people mentioning it way back in volume two has led me to believe that he's been influenced by him a little bit this whole time, which is kind of true, but it's kind of, it skewed my perception of Lo Bing Hei, and I wish going in as a fresh reader, I didn't have that perception skewed by the comments. So, but it is what it is. What can we do now? <laughs> so anyway, so he was okay with the merge as long as he could be with Xin Ching Cho. And he's got this inferiority complex. And these abandon abandonment issues. And he's got these abandonment issues, inferiority complex, and he feels unloved. Okay. All right. I have things to say about that, but we'll, we'll get to that here in a little bit. So anyway, so they all, I, honestly, I was not entirely surprised that once Lo Binghe shows up, all the demons kind of skedaddle and go their other way because it, it's been established the entire series that Lo Binghe being the protagonist has the ability to kind of have this o penis to him. So him scaring away all the demons and making it a little bit easier for them to get to Zhushi Long and Tianlong Jun, that part all made sense. I thought, I was like, oh, we're, we're already here. Okay, but that's not surprising. I do love that Mo Bei Jun sends Shang Qinghua flying into the cave. Also, you know what? We might as well point out the picture. It's the only image for this chapter set. I love it dearly, but I'm really surprised. I I kind of wanted to see Yu Qingyan and Xin Qingcho and see a picture of the two of them having the conversation and the revelation to go back with the image from before, but it's fine. Instead, we get this amazing picture of Shang Qinghua going after Mo Bei Jun, being like, fuck, he can't fly. And going, what a great bookend. We have Mo Bei Jun sending Shang Qinghua flying into the cave. And then Shang Qinghua flies back to save Mo Bei Jun. They might have a kinky relationship and we just don't know about it yet. I don't know. We're going we're, we're gonna to talk about that as we get closer. We're going to talk about that as we get closer, but I'm going to get ahead of myself. So chapter 21 is called Always Together, which you could talk about Zhuxi Long and Tianlong Jun. You could talk about Mo Bei Jun and Shang Qinghua. You could talk about Yu Qingyan and Shen Qingcho. You could talk about Shen Qingcho and Lo Binghei. You could talk about Su. You could talk about a lot of things. You could also talk about Jin Mo and Lo Binghei always being together. So it's like, there's just so, it all comes to a head here, right? So basically, we finally get to, to messing with. I felt bad for Tianlong Jun in this chapter set. I did. He's a terrible father. He's he's no father of the year. But I think out of all the MXTX fathers, he's probably one of the more sympathetic because he really is like if Lo... He's basically a middle-aged Lo Binghei in so many ways because he started out as this like white lotus. He just wanted to sing and interact with the humans and he was betrayed over and over again and imprisoned in this dark fortress forever. And then he got out and he's just kind of was done with the world and didn't see a point in living and didn't want to connect with the sun. And so in a lot of ways, Lo Binghei is kind of like both of his parents. He kind of has this way that like Tianlong Jun, get this right, like Tianlong Jun, he is deeply emotional and has all of these issues with that trauma but then like his mother, like Su Jin or Jian, he has this like fierce, like furious personality, but also ends up being betrayed 
and hurt. And a lot of the things that happened in this chapter set reminded me of both of his parents. And I was like, well, that's kind of just a recipe of character disaster. And also the whole time I was sitting there going, Shang Qinghua, why did you write this horrible story? <laughs> I need Shen Qing Cho to reconnect with Shen with Shang Qinghua, if not by the end of this novel, by volume four, and talk about this. Cause it's just like, what the fudge, proud immortal demon way? What the hell? So anyway, they meet up with Tianlong Jun and I felt bad for him because he finally is just like, whatever, I've got Jin Mo here, it's fine. He he cares so little that he doesn't reveal to them that Jin Mo's not even listening to Tianlong Jun. It's really listening to Lo Bing Hei this entire time. He doesn't even care that as much until the very end to, to recognize that. And so anyway, Zhu Long poisoning the others with the scales. I thought during this whole battle, what I thought was going to happen was that Shin Ching Cho was going to get poisoned. I thought it was going to like kind of be a parallel to the first demonic battle where we see Shin Ching Cho like take the poison barbs for Lo Bing Hei. I thought it was going to be like that. So I was expecting full on for Zhu Long to accidentally poison Shin Ching Cho and then Zhu Long be so terrible and feeling awful about it. But that's not what happened. Instead... Um, Mo Bei Jun ends up saving Shin Ching Cho and oddly enough like Mo Bei Jun getting hit with the the blast of light from Shan Su insane also I know Shan Su it all makes sense now where his power is connected to like I was like why does he unsheath Shan Su this whole time the fact that Yan Ching Ch Yu Ching Yang's life force is connected to the damn sword from his cultivation makes so much sense now. Also, it definitely feels like something that uh, Shang Qinghua would write. Seems like a very convenient plot element that you can't, well, I can't use a sword because then he would die, but then I don't know. But then if he does use a sword and die, it's like a way to get him out of the plot. So that makes sense. But also it's extremely phallic and sexual. And I'm not surprised the airplane shooting towards the sky wrote this. I'm like, if this was intentionally supposed to be like a Don Mai, instead of just like a stallion novel, of course the idea that it's like a phallic representation and that if he unsheathes his sword, he's going to die. I'm like, what is this airplane shooting towards the sky? It all makes sense, but I'm just like, this is, it's, it's, it would be hilarious if this chapter stakes weren't just like, tur, tur, tur. oh my God. But yeah. So anyway, then we find out that he's like, oh, Tianlong Jun's like, well, I can't really do anything much about it. And so Lo Binghei is thinking, at this point, he jumps in to fight Tianlong Jun. And Zhu Xilong gets pinned to the wall. Tianlong Jun is basically crumpling. And it seems to be over. And so Shen Ching Cho is like, I thought you said Tianlong Jun was going to be a hard. And then Shen Qinghua says, he is hard. And at that moment, I know it was meant to be serious. But I was like, could you not replace hard with difficult? <laughs> because the MXTX gutter mind in me has me being like, is this also a sexual connotation? Where he's like, oh, he's hard right now. I'm like, I'm like, ah, the, the ballad of Chun Shen is, are we bringing this up? So yeah. And then Shin Ching Cho's like, well, does this make sense that we defeated this so easily? Are we all good? And Shang Ching was like, well, what else can we say? It, it just works out. So I, one thing that does anger me throughout this chapter set, and it mainly has to do with airplane shooting towards the sky. One thing that angers me is that I understand why airplane shooting towards the sky does not recognize that Jin Mo is still attached to Lo Bing Hei and that Lo Bing Hei is the one causing the merge instead of Tianlong Jun. I understand why he wouldn't recognize that. But in the same vein, for the last how many chapters has Sheng Qinghua been holding it over Shen Qing Cho's throat that's like, oh, well, actually Lo Bing Hei loves you and actually all this is happening and oh, how does it feel to not be a heterosexual and all that? He's been going on about this, so he knows about this plot line. He, I'm sure, has read the ballads and all this about the two of them. And so I'm like, you're the author of this story, Airplane. You didn't see this coming? And so I'm like... Also, he wrote, it's like Jessica Rabbit's animator being in the room and being like, I don't know why she's reacting this way. I'm like, you drew her. So I'm like, you know, it's like, 
airplane shooting towards the sky literally created Lo Bing Hay's character with all of these character traits. And he didn't see this coming. I'm like, huh? But he also conveniently gets yeeted from the cave to go save Mobe June. So he can't be there for all of this. And it's like, I just, I'm the most mad at airplane shooting towards the sky at this point. Now that I think about it, right? So I think it should be said that at the end of the day, and we're going to put Shin Ching Show slash Shin Yan, at the end of the day, he does not want to kill anyone. He has gone out of his way this whole story to not kill anyone, whether it's been Liu Chingge or Yu Ching Yang, whether it's been Shang Ching Hua, whether it's been Mo Jun or Sha Hualing. Like, he's not wanted to kill anybody. That's been, like, the least he's wanted to do. Shin Ching Cho is, is actually a really kind person. He's just wrapped up in peacockness, right? And he can be cynical, but he, he has a good heart deep down where he doesn't want to kill anybody. I mean, the Palace Master State was just for other reasons beyond control, but um, that was the case in point. We, we figured out he deserved that fate. So basically, Zhu Long talks about, I like Zhu Long's sort of monologue here where Shin Ching Cho is like, why are you letting yourself suffer? And Zhu Long's like, I've always been this way. <laughs> just, and Shin Ching Cho is just like, just like, let me grab, let me grab my foot and I'm going to put it in my mouth right now. <laughs> I, I just it's such a I, I feel for Shin Ching Cho in that moment so much because I, I put my foot in my mouth in real life so many times and I'm like womp womp we shouldn't have done that and so this felt like such a moment I could connect with Shin Ching Cho so much because he was like oh oh you've always looked that way oh <laughs> and poor Zhu Long like Zhu Long I love his monologue it felt like him finally getting to speak for himself and then Tian Long Jun is like, don't talk so much. He doesn't get it. And so then Tian Long Jun's like, look, if you were imprisoned under a mountain all these years and you had all this happen, would you have done any differently? And everybody's kind of like, I definitely think it speaks something to, and I'm sure MXTX is making commentary about it, but I have family that kind of work, they work in the prison system here in the U.S., and it not only changes kind of who you are fundamentally to see the worst of people all the time, but I constantly have conversations with them talking about how, you know, because I'm very much, you know, from being in education with um, mediation and conflict resolution, we talk a lot about restore, restor restorative justice. And it's kind of a different way of looking at the justice system and how we treat people as humans. It's not perfect and it's not going to reach everybody, obviously, but it is trying to find the humanity in people and understanding, you know, despite their mistakes, that they are people at the end of the day and trying to work with that. And it can be hard to tell someone that when all they see in a prison system is the worst of humanity. And usually those people are the worst because they've given up and they don't see the point anymore. And they're just kind of like, well, who cares? Y'all think I'm guilty. Y'all think I'm not a human. Who cares? And I, I just, I felt that through Tian Long Jun in this moment and it broke my heart because then when Wu Chen is like, hey, look, I know I could have brought this back up at the Zhao Hua Monastery and we're like, well, it would have been great if you had. And he was like, but the circumstances didn't let me. And I'm like, oh my God. And he finally brings up everything and goes through everything. And Tian Long Jun finally gets all the realization that he needs to know that things weren't as they seem and to be like, oh, shit, this was like this the whole time? And then Shin Ching Show and everybody else is like, yep, apparently. It, it made you just, you, I felt so bad for him. But I want to point this out. Lo Bing is not listening during this whole story, apparently. And I'm like, I really wish you'd listened, Lo Bing Hei, because it seems like you could have learned something from this moment. Because as Tian Long Jun finds out, it's this idea that there are often hidden, hidden plot lines or reasons that are not apparent at first. I think this is one of the reasons I was frustrated with Lo Bing Hei because he's there. He's, he's standing there as they tell this whole story. And the whole point of this story was to reveal that, hey, 
you know what? Sometimes things aren't what you think they are because you're not able to see the full picture because of various circumstances. And sometimes, you know, the story about Suji on actually loving him, but because of the circumstances, she was unable to do so. It's not that different than Shin Ching Cho and Lo Bing Hei from before. And so I'm like, oh, see, there's some relation there. We can draw some comparisons. But Lo Bing Hei's not listening. <laughs> Doesn't see, just goes in one ear and out the other. He's already made up his mind, and Jin Mo's already taken him over. And so I'm like, okay. And so that is one thing that does bother me is that I'm like, did you not hear everything that just happened? And I know when I'm about to, I'm about to dig into Lo Bing Hei a little bit, and all of Lo Bing Hei's stands, they're sharpening their pitchforks. All of Lo Bing Hei's stands are just, they're sharpening their little Wolverine claws, <laughs> ready to dive into me. And they're going to make the excuse of, well, he was already possessed by Jin Mo to the point of blah, 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 blah. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it because I, whatever, doesn't matter if it is or not. It's still his intrusive thoughts and his character in general that I'm going to wreck on here for just a hot second and defend my peacock because I know the comments are going to be like see Lo Bing Hei has suffered so much and he's had so many bad things happen to him and it's all Shin Ching Cho's fault no they're both idiots we've established this a long time ago but I, we're going to talk about this a little bit but I'm like you know Lo Bing Hei you've lost Shin Ching Cho twice now by doing stupid things <laughs> so and to Lo Bing Hei's credit a lot of it has been things he didn't... Again, the problem with this story with our two main characters is that they have not had the opportunity to communicate with one another over the last several chapters. They've been really close, and I've been wanting them to talk to each other, and they haven't gotten to that point. And I thought things were going to get better, and they were going to get a chance to talk to each other, and then this all happened, and it was like, shit, no, never mind, wait. But to Lo Bing Hay's credit, I do think that there have been a lot of moments we're going to talk about and put up here on Whiteboard Coon that needed to be addressed that weren't. And to Lo Bing Hei's credit, he did not kill Gong Yi Zhao. That was Yushi Long. He did not um, do a lot of things to the palace guards and things like that. That was the old palace master. He did not cause a lot of the events to happen. He was just as in the dark as anybody else. And he was wrongfully blamed. So to Lo Bing Hei's credit, yeah, he had all that happen. It's just now I'm focused on this here right now. I love the imagery that MXTX gives us with this of the snowflakes falling in, like the cave, the sunlight, the snowflakes. Like, it's so beautiful. I'm like, I want I want this animated so badly. And I know there's probably animatics out there that I'm going to check out when I'm caught up, but I hope that some of this stuff is animated because it's just so good. It's great. But yeah, so the black smoke and purple miasma continues to spew from Jin Mo without pause as the battle gets, you know, more and more clear. And so Shin Ching Cho, he feels really bad for Tianlong Jun. And he's like, I really don't think we should kill <laughs> this guy because, you know, he, he really doesn't deserve to die. He's just been a victim of circumstance. And so then uh, Tianlong Jun's like, look, I know you like to think that I'm responsible for this demonic sword spewing out all this energy, but I can't even maintain Zhu Xilong's human form anymore. So not me. <laughs> like, shit. Okay. And so he's like, you know, who's been giving Jin Mo this demonic chi this whole time? It's Lo Bing Hei. So then we get to chapter 79. So let's talk about this chapter, shall we? And it's so funny that of all times, Shin Ching Cho asks Lo Bing Hei to come here. Lo Bing Hei's asked Shin Ching Cho to come to him several times. And Shin Ching Cho said no, but we'll talk about that. But then this one time, Lo Bing Hei's like, no. I'm not coming to you. You never came to me. I'm not doing it. And Shin Ching Cho's like, well, you lied to me, which is a thing. And Lo Bing of course, is like, well, I didn't lie to you because I said I'd help you against Tianlong Jun. That wasn't a lie. And I like that Shin Ching Cho's like, well, it wasn't the damn truth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, Tianlong Jun says, well, letting the enemy go to cover for one's own work is quite a good move, but I'm not in very useful, so it was really him. So Lo Binghe personally gave Jin Mo to Tianlong Jun to make it seem like it wasn't him. So this has been premeditated, y'all. Lo Binghe premeditated this whole merging of worlds from way back several chapters ago that he premeditated this. This was all pre-med. He meant to do this. 
from way back when, right? And then didn't say anything to Shin Ching Cho. If I was Shin Ching Cho, I'd be a little bit pissed about that. I'd be like, really? You never were going to open up about this? You were going to merge these worlds? Really? And he's like, I don't trust Shizun anymore. And Shin Ching Cho's like, well, I've trusted you all of this time. This is the part that I got a little pissed about was when Shin Ching Cho's like, I trusted you. And then Lo Bing is like, well, I don't trust you anymore. And I'm like, did, did did this part right here mean nothing to you? I'm like, when when Shin Ching Cho ripped roots out of his body and carried your big honking ass through a mausoleum, bleeding, did, did that mean nothing to you? When he saved you in a coffin and then went and faced the old palace master by himself, did that mean nothing to you? And I know Lo Bang Hei saved him vice versa before with the acid rain and all that. But I'm like, Shin Ching Shou could have left his ass in the mausoleum and went on his way, but he did not do that. And so I'm like, so you don't trust. <laughs> I was like, okay. Okay. And so then Shin Ching Shou's like, what is wrong with you? And of course you could argue that Jin Mo is influencing Lo Bing Hei's mind. And at this point he's invaded his thoughts and and then, but it's like all of his insecurities all come to play here. Like he's jealous, which here's my thing. I'm like, dude, look, we're going to get into some spoilers for the rest of this discussion with Heaven Officials Blessing and Modao Zushi. I'm going to be doing some comparisons. So if you've not seen those stories, just be forewarned. I'm not going to use any specific spoilers with the plot. So don't worry about that. But I'm going to talk a little bit about some character stuff. So th there be spoilers from here on in, probably, until I do this again. <laughs> and I'm done talking about the comparisons. But I, when he was like, well, when you're with them, you're happiest. And you're the, I'm, I'm sorry. And this is going to piss off a bunch of Lo Bing Hay stands. And to that, I say, I'm sorry. This is going to sound insincere. It's going to sound a little mean. And if that offends you, I'm very sorry. I'm very deeply sorry. But man the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like, I, that whole, his jealousy at Shin Ching Show because he likes other people other than just him. I'm like, I'm sorry. I never saw Lan Wan Ji getting mad at Wei Wuxian because he's frenzies with Ni Huai Sang. Never saw that. I, Lo, Lo, Lan Wanji has never been jealous of Wei Wuxian hanging out with anybody, except for the ghost girls, but that's, it's a thing. But it's not anything like that. It's like, whatever. He knows that Wei Wuxian at the end of the day likes him, right? Even when, and even when he didn't know that Wei Wuxian liked him in mutually, he was not jealous of him to that point. Then you have Hua Chong, who is a much more jealous character, mind you, than Lan Wanji. But even Hua Chong would just give like a hmm, hmm at Shi Lian's friends, but he wasn't willing to destroy the world so that it would just be him and Shi Lian. I'm just like, Lo Bing Hei, the jealousy needs to go. We need to get rid of that. That's not healthy. That's toxic. It's very toxic for somebody in a relationship with you to be like, I don't like you hanging out with other people. That's like an instant, nope, cut that shit out. So I'm like, no. And I know that everybody's gonna be like, well, he has issues. And I'm like, well, he needs to get the fuck over that. So stop that. Or Shin Ching Cho needs to get away from him because that's a no-go. You need to get over it. Understand that Shin Ching Cho can have friends. He can be friends with Ning Ying Ying and Liu Chinge and Yu Ching Yan. And you don't have to be the center of his world all the time. You are the center of his world, but you don't have to be the only thing in his world. That is, uh, I hate couples where the boyfriend's like, it just has to be me and you. And the girl has like no say in it or the guy has no say in it and they can't have friends. I'm like, that's no. Mm -mm. So that part pissed me off. But again, it's Jin Mo influencing him and bringing this part out of him and making it, you know, exacerbated. So that's fine. When he says it hurts me very, very much, that's very toxic. And again, Jin Mo is influencing him. But Shin Ching Cho is like, and I get that he stuck around. But again, he didn't trust Shin Ching Cho. And again, I understand that Shin Ching Cho should have defended Lo Bing Hei in that moment. And he didn't. And he should have done that. And he's like, 
hmm, like meant that he, you know, was happy without him. Shin Ching Cho didn't know that it was hurting him. And I know that that's, but at the same time, Shin Ching Cho was also trying not to escalate the situation. Like you're a wanted person that they're trying to kill. And Shin Ching Cho is trying to get them to not kill you. So give him a break, right? And then, and then Lo Bing Hei talks about hating himself. And I did feel bad for him here when he talks about hating himself and how useless he is. Now he can't do anything and, uh, and all this stuff. But again, I think back to heaven officials blessing where I'm like, no offense, Lo Bing Hei, but I think Hua Chong might've had it a little worse than you. <laughs> and he didn't turn out being like this. So I'm just like, what are you doing? Stop. Which maybe since, you know, heaven officials blessing came after Scum villain self saving system. MXTX kind of figured out parts and pieces of her protagonist. She's like, mm, we could tweak that a little bit and workshop that a little bit. But I was just like, when he was like hating himself, I'm like, yeah, that sucks. But you need to talk to Shin Ching Cho just as much as Shin Ching Cho needs to talk to you. And you should have told him this a ways back. And so that's when they say, you know, you've been possessed. And he says, you know, if you leave him no choice, then of course you can't be abandoned. But Master Wu Chin brings up a great point. He's like, if you make it to where it's just you and your Shizun, your Shizun's probably going to hate you. And he's like, I don't care. He can try to kill me. And I don't know. Nah, nah. And again, it's Jin Mo influencing him. But it is just kind of like, it feels so bratty. And it's like, that is such a brat thing to say. And I know he's influenced by the damn sword. It's probably not all Lo Bing Hei is saying. But... It does lead to Shin Ching Cho making some self-actualizations here. So he's like, are you going to destroy everything? And he's like, yes, why not? And then he tries to shut up Jushi Long. Right? So, and the part that hurt me the most was that Shin Ching Cho, the part that did hurt me that Shin Ching Cho did in this chapter set is that when he's trying to talk Lo Bing Hei down, he has his hand on his sword. And I'm like, but that's what got us here in the first place. So stop doing that. So it was just like, it felt like we were regressing so much. We'd made so much progress and we were taking so many steps back. And I'm like, I thought we already dealt with this in volume two. I thought y'all learned your lessons, but you're both still Bacchus. So no. And then Jushi Long calls him pitiful. And he's like, will Shizun stay by my side this once? And here's the thing that got me was that he talks about Shizun abandoning him. He's like, they all have become a reason to abandon me until sometimes you don't even need a reason. It's always like this. And I know that the sword is exacerbating and making him, like, exaggerate his feelings, but let's talk about that when we get to it down here because I felt a little bit like Shin Ching Cho was conceding a little much. I was like, you don't need to apologize for some of the things you did because you had a reason for doing it. And Lo Bing Hei needs to not be such a codependent little shit and get over some of that. And I know that some people are going to be like, well, that's how I am too. And I understand. And I'm like, that is perfectly fine. But if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody, you've got to communicate and you've got to understand where the other person's coming from. And I will defend Shin Ching Cho in some of his actions when we get down to it. So Yu Ching Yan knocks Mo Bei Jun back. I love Shang Ching Hua saying, well, fuck, he can't fly. I got to go save him. I feel at this point like Shang Ching Hua has fully accepted the fact that he meant to ride a Don Mai from the beginning. And he is fully settled into the fact that he's like, well, I'm going to be with Mo Bei Jun <laughs> if I can get out of this uh, and it will be all fine. I was like, we're all good. Um, and so I just, I, w I hope we get more of Shang Ching Hua and Mo Bei Jun throughout this. I really hope that we do. But, and I, I want to express, because I know there's probably several Lo Bing Hei stands that are going to be writing me very hateful comments about how I've misunderstood Lo Bing Hei's character and all of this. I am being harsh with him and I, I shouldn't be. And I'm sorry I'm being so harsh. This is my initial reaction. In a week, I will probably calm down and be, I'm like, my face is flushed right now. I will probably be much more calm. But I was a little bit mad that Lo Bing Hei is treated in this in this vault in this chapter set. I know he's possessed by the sword's evil powers, but I was kind of pissed off that Shin that Shin Ching Cho was like, yeah, yeah, it is right. I probably shouldn't have done all that. I'm like, stand up for yourself. No, there were some things he did that I'm like, Lo Bing Hei just needs to get a spine and deal with it. 
And it was kind of pissing me off because it almost made it seem like it was all Shinchincho's fault. And I'm like, it is not all his fault, actually. And so we need to get into this. So they all go in the cave. Everything finally caves in. And then as it caves in, Yu Qingyan, like, Shinchincho finds him. And then there's the whole reveal that he's been Shige this whole time. It's like, oh my God. The the saddest part about all of this is that in the original, the part that sucks so much about this part of the story, it's not Yu Qingyan um, confessing to Shin Ching Cho as he's possibly dying, which I hope he doesn't die. But the fact of it is when Shin Ching Cho realizes, one, Yu Qingyan is finally confessing to not Shin Zhu, but Shin Yan. So it's not a confession that's ever going to hit the original Shin Ching Cho, the original flavor's ears. Two, the original flavor ends up actually killing him without realizing that it was him. And Shin Ching Cho's like, this is all messed up. <laughs> this is all messed up! Like, airplane shooting towards the sky, what are you doing? And it was all of these plot lines that were just cut out because they weren't popular and weren't going to go with the original story. And it's insane. So... Anyway, he confesses that he was Chige, that his sword was his life force, and then they find out that it was because of a chi, G, chi deviation. He said by using his life force to channel his spiritual energy, he bound his life to his sword. It's like, how could he have? He says, when I was 15, I entered Cheating Peak, and my heart preoccupied and desperate for success. And he's like, instead, I ended up like I am now, but it ended up working to my advantage. And then he says he's sorry. He's like, I am an impulsive person. And that's when he realizes that who he actually is. Yep. So, no matter how Shin Ching Cho dug his own grave, the sect leader had never made his life difficult for him and instead was infinitely forgiving and infinitely patient. And then there we go. And so then... He's like, it's too late, and we have all of these system updates. So, Zhu Long's story is complete. We found out everything we need to know about him. And then Tianlong Jun, his story is complete. We've come to the conclusion with his character. Su Jian, we come complete with her character. Shin Ching Cho, his plot hole filling target. All the things with Shin Zhu comes full circle. Um, Yu Ching Yan, we filled that plot hole as well. And said the scan found no obvious logical gaps, so we had 1,500 B points averaged. And it says by upgrading rather a lot of things to roast, you've unlocked the achievement of readable if nothing else is available. I'm so curious what we have over here. Um, we might as well put this plot point down. We have unlocked the achievement readable. Oh, that's what it is. Readable if nothing else is available. <laughs> so basically, we went from, oh, we can roast some things, like make fun of some things in the story, to, I guess if you had to read it in an airport, you could. <laughs> Airplane shooting towards the sky, right? So it says satisfaction points are at zero. In this situation, you can substitute B points when paying for drop cost of key items. So I guess... You can substitute the point, the B points out to use the drop items. Sure. And this is probably my favorite part of the chapter, but also the part I wanted to stand up for Shin Ching Cho is he was like, what was the point? He finally unlocked all these achievements. And I love how at this point in the story, everything has come full circle. And it's such a book end moment from the very first volume. In the first volume, Shin Ching Cho was so eager to play this like a, a game and to get those points. And now that he's finally doing and achieving all the things, he's like, this isn't a game. And he's like, what is, what was this system? What was the point of its existence? So he could know how unfortunate all these people were, how he could witness the most tragic ways the world could screw people over, or so he could drive Lo Bing Hei to insanity. So then he's questioning... What is the point of the scum villain self-saving system? Which we haven't gotten to save Lo Bing Hei yet. So he questions whether it's to see all of this tragedy or drive 
Lo Bing Hei to insanity. Because at the very beginning, what I like is it bookends. Shin Ching Cho was trying everything he could to save himself. And now he saved himself. You know, Yu Ching Yan sacrificed himself to save him. He technically could get off and get out of here. If he walked away right now and left the cave and left Lo Bing Hei, he'd probably be fine. But what was the price of that? And he said everyone had said Lo Bing Hei had gone mad. Jin Mo, which Lo Bing Hei had finally managed to suppress after a million word struggle in the original work, had gained the upper hand in this struggle and invaded his mind. So the OG had Lo Bing Hei controlling Jin Mo. And here in this version, Jin Mo is controlling Lo Bing Hei. Okay. So we have that. And he says this wasn't the result of one or two events, but an accumulation over time until it finally erupted. And I do like this. I do like that Shin Ching Cho is like, there were a lot of flags that were noting the progression of all of this. And he's like, I should have noticed, but I didn't because I didn't think that they were. And I'm like, I don't think I can be mad at Shin Ching Cho for not noticing because how could you notice? Because Lo Bing Hei never talked to him about it. So how could he note? And so he's like, he never realized Lo Bang Hei was actually so insecure to the point of having inferiority complex. And that is something that, yeah, how was he supposed to know? Because Lo Bing Hei never talked to him about it. He's like, at first he thought, he lo he thought Lo Bing Hei was unbelievable, cruel, and evil. And then he thought he was strong and bright. And looking back, he's like, they had appeared as early as Zawa Monastery. Now, this is the part I will defend Shin Ching Cho. Because when he heard the backstory, he had this shock. The moment of his greatest panic, he reached out to Shin Ching Cho and pleaded for his Shizun to leave with him. And Shin Ching Cho hadn't taken his hand, but instead made Lo Bing Hei leave first. And at the time, he grew unstable, but what he needed wasn't the path of safe retreat, but to stay with him. So this is the part where I will defend Shin Ching Cho's actions a little bit. Because Shin Ching Cho was sending Lo Bing Hei away because he thought Lo Bing Hei was in danger. So he's like, hey, no, you go ahead and leave. I'll meet up with you later. But I need to settle things here and try to do what the system is telling me to do and try to figure things out. And yeah, maybe if he knew. But the thing is, Lo Bing Hei should have said, I just want to be with you and I'm going to stay with you. He should have said that. Lo Bing Hei should have been like, I want to stay with you, Shin Ching Cho. I don't want to leave Shizun. Let me stay and we'll handle it together. But instead he was insecure and was just like, okay, I'll go. And I'm like, if you had a problem with it, you're a grown ass man. You're 25 years old. Say something. You're not a 14 year old anymore. You're grown up. Say some shit. Defend yourself. Get a backbone. Come on now. Don't make this Shin Ching Cho's fault because he didn't understand what you were wanting. You know? And so that's where I get a little pissed off because I'm like, if you are going to be insecure, be insecure. Fine. People have that problem. But don't come back later and say it's the other person's fault because they couldn't read your mind and they weren't telepathic. You know? So that part did make me a little bit angry. And then to a low being in that state of mind, it was like he was being thrown away. It was just as Lo being himself had said. He wasn't forcing him to choose. But he knew that Shin Ching Cho would one day abandon him. I just don't like the idea that Lo Bing Hei is like, oh, if you don't come with me and do whatever I say, Shizun, that means you're abandoning me. And it's like, no, that's not it at all. You're just misinterpreting and not communicating, which is annoying. So, and Shin Ching Cho goes back to Yu Ching Yang and helping him in that moment. How could he not go completely insane? I just, I get a little frustrated because it almost feels like Lo Bing Hei gets a pass because he's insecure and has an inferiority complex. But Lo Bing Hei not communicating or, you know, trying to be equal with Shin Jing Cho, that's not on the table. I'm like, mm, mm, I don't buy that. I'm like, Lo Bing Hei, I, why does Shin Jing Cho have to put in all the work? <laughs> Why is why does our peerless cucumber have to do everything? Why does he have to help you cure your inferiority complex and be the perfect person for you and be your security blanket? Like, what about Shin Ching Cho? Who's going to be that for him? Why does he have to be the one to do everything? You know? So then we have 
you know, Yu Qingyan going along. I, I always like too that Shin Ching Cho like holds everybody up. Like he holds up Liu Chingge, he holds up Lo Binghe, he holds up Yu Qingyan. Like he supports them throughout this whole story. The work is never done for our peerless cucumber. And so he then, you know, realizes all these emotions that Yu Qingyan had for him. And again, that's a whole another situation where Shin Ching Cho didn't realize just how emotional Yu Qingyan was or how much he was holding back because again, people ain't telepathic. You got to communicate how you feel sometimes. Otherwise people don't know. We can't read your minds. We can't read your thoughts. So, but also Shin Ching Cho is very bad <laughs> at reading cues, right? Which I fully understand. I'm not the best at it either, right? And so this part also got me because it's like, He's like, well, why hadn't he told him earlier? It was like Shin Ching Cho and Lo Bing Hei. Why hadn't he told him earlier? Which I'm like, yes, why not? He's like, if he hadn't been so cavalier, so full of conjecture, Lo Bing Hei might not have darkened. He could have remained the sweet disciple on Xi Jing Peak. And I'm like, sure. Even if they backed up 10,000 steps back when he forced him to the endless abyss. And we talked about this back. We talked about it back during when it happened that Shin Ching Cho, that the, this part I do understand because we talked about it back then. I was like, well, maybe there's a way for Shin Ching Cho to let him know. Maybe I even said this. If you go back to those chapters, I was back to the Donghua. I was like, well, maybe back in the Donghua episodes, I even said this. I'm like, well, maybe Shin Ching Cho could just ask Lo Bing Hei to get down in the abyss himself and he'll go do it. But that sounds so silly right? When you say it out loud, you're like, oh, here, go, go jump into hell for me. And the fact that Shin Ching Cho's like, Lo Bing Hei would have done it. But to defend Shin Ching Cho, how would he have known? Because he was basing everything from the novel and how Lo Bing Hei was in the original work. And even if he saw that Lo Bing Hei was like this, how could he have known? I just, I don't like MXTX putting all of the onus on everything bad happening on Shin Ching Cho when Lo Bing Hei made some really stupid decisions too. Like, I don't like that. I don't feel like Shin Ching Cho should get the brunt of the blame for being a normal freaking human being and for not assuming that someone would... I mean, it is beautiful that Lo Bing Hei would do anything for his Shizun. It's great. It's beautiful. We all would like that. But at the same time, it's just in other MXTX works, there is so much more communication between the two leads that they don't get to this point where you're just like, you both are idiots. What are you doing? Like there's other circumstances that gets in the way of them being together, but it's, they're not like this where there's not that like, well, if y'all just talked for five seconds, we could have solved all these problems. And that's not what happened here. So end of all the spoilers <laughs> but yeah and then Shin Ching Cho's like I'm ashamed of myself and I'm like don't be ashamed of yourself Shin Ching Cho I wish to solve these affairs I I mean I understand Shin Ching Cho is ashamed that he you know didn't view Lo Bing Hei as a fully realized character based on all of the criteria that would lead him to think otherwise and I get that he wants to fix things. My thing was, whenever he had Jin Mo back before the cave thing, Yu Qingyong was like, come with me, let's leave. And he said no. He shook his head. He's like, no, I'm going to stay here with Lo Bing Hei and solve things. And that's when the cave collapsed. So he already wasn't running away back then. But like some of the times where he's run away, sure, those are definitely moments where I'm like, you should have stayed and helped Lo Bing Hei. But the one time he tells him to leave Zhao Hua Monastery, he had a reason. Lo Bing Hei shouldn't have been a wimp. He should have stood his ground and spoke why he wanted to stay with Shin Ching Show. He shouldn't have been like cowering away with his tail between his legs. And then even if he did, he shouldn't have got mad at Shin Ching Show about it later. It's like, well, you left. You didn't stay. Why does it all have to be on him? So then the other thing was when he asks Shin Ching Show to leave his the people that cared for him and took and took care of him, he's like, I can't do that. Again, I don't like the idea of Lo Bing Hei being like, well, you can't have any friends except me. And I'm like, mm -mm, I don't like that. Nope. No, no. At least with the other pairings, again, spoilers for the next 10 seconds. At least with the other pairings, 
they both mutually want to go away and get away from everybody else. They have mutual reason to be like, you guys are great, but we're going to go over here, whatever. But Shin Shin Sho has friends that he actually cares for and they care for him back. Why does he have to leave them? Because of this brat that doesn't want to have friends. Like, I think that's stupid. So I am like, mm -hmm. So anyway, Wu Chin says at this point that inner demons arise due to obsession. So to eliminate his inner demons, we have to cure his obsession. So what does that mean? <laughs> Well, um, I, I do think that that means that Shin Xing Sho needs to go to him with the jade pendant and be like, look, Baka, since you can't put two and two together yourself and I have to do everything for you since the work is never done for our peerless cucumber and I have to solve all these problems because the system has deemed me to be the self-saving one here. Look, here's the deal. And just come clean about how he feels about Lo Bing Hei and just come clean of how he feels and express that. And I will give Lo Binghe credit that I can understand because Shin Ching Cho has not, we've seen Shin Ching Cho from our perspective and we know that he loves Lo Binghe. He's just not good at expressing it. And I do understand why Lo Binghe would be confused. He wouldn't think that Shizun likes him and Shin Ching Cho's like, eh. But I'm also kind of like, you can't read between the lines with everything that's happened the last six chapters, really? You sure? But okay, give him the benefit of the doubt. Shin Ching Cho will go and hopefully clear things up next week and, and you know, clear the air and be like, look, idiot, I do like you. And go from there. So we'll see what happens. But, and I don't, uh, I feel so bad because I don't want to, I don't want to shit on Lo Bing Hei, but I tell y'all, he is my least favorite of the six. Because he's just such a whiny brat sometimes. And I'm like, oh my God, get over it. <laughs> I was like, I would just want to be like, I, I feel like Pua Chong is shaking his walker being like, <laughs> and Lo Wan Ji is like, really bitch? Oh, those are your problems? Okay. <laughs> I just, I feel like, I feel like the other two leads from the other stories are just sitting there like chewing an apple being like, really? <laughs> I just, and I'm like, mm -hmm, I know, right? <laughs> I feel bad because, again, I know how Lo Binghe feels. I understand. And there are some points Lo Binghe has that I'm like, I get it, man. I do. But then there are other points I'm like, I want to defend my peerless cucumber because I get where he's coming from. And I understand why he would do the things that he did. They're both idiots. They're both at fault. But whatever. <laughs> oh, we'll see how it goes down next week. But yeah, so please don't hate me too much in the comments. I, y'all, we still have weeks to go. We still have volume four to go. I have not made final judgment against Lo Bing Hei, but he was a brat this chapter. And I was just like, I thought we were past this, sir. I thought that once you hit 25, when you're 15, it was acceptable. But now you've matured a bit. I thought we learned our lessons. But I guess when you get possessed by demonic swords, those lessons kind of go out the window. So... But we'll see. I'm going to reserve my final judgment on him until the end of volume four. Maybe I'll change my mind. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm curious to know your comments down below. Please be gentle. <laughs> but I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back real soon with more of Scum Villain's self-saving system. <sighs> Bye.